Hey, yo, before I start this episode, man, I want to say rest in peace to the bro Bleak, a.k.a. Caesar. You heard I met this brother only about eight, nine months ago. We did about five stories. And I can honestly say, man, you know, I started I started having a lot of love for the brother, man. I mean, he was a younger brother. He was trying to get his life together. You know, he was out of New York City trying to do the right thing, man. And, you know, it's just crazy, man. Rest in peace to the bro. You feel me? His stories was great. I mean, he was an intelligent dude, a sincere dude. And, you know, his death kind of crushed me, man. You heard it hurt me. It took a piece of my soul, man, because... This life we lived is so rough, man. It's like we don't really get no happy endings with this thing, man. You heard, but rest in peace, my brother. Let's hear him out. Boom, I took the remote control. I put the remote control on myself. So I, I'm waiting for the nigga. I know it's coming. So I hear the nigga walking around. Where the remote at? Who changed the channel? Woo, woo, woo. Nigga like, yo, the New York nigga, the New York nigga, the Brooklyn nigga. Yo, woo, woo. That nigga. I hear niggas saying this shit. So the nigga walked to myself. He like, yo. He like, yo, oh, 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 that's what you want? And he walk outside on some making noise. I said, no, 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 come on, put you down right now, come on. Come on, come on, come on. It was, other, it was other New York bloods in Vegas? He wasn't really like that, though. But I'm saying it his was... bloods in Vegas, though? Like, his blood, his Vegas bloods? Oh, hell yeah, nigga, they got the, um, um, um. They got the West Coast Bloods, they got the Pyrus, they got the um the Playboys, they, they bloods out there. Playboys is bloods in Vegas. In, in Cali they crip. But in Vegas, man, it is bloods. They got the GQ, they got the Gershon. The biggest gang in, in Vegas is Gershon. Gershon Park. They not bloods, they not crips, but they 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 ride more with the bloods. But they they own shit. They big as hell. They got the rolling sixties in uh uh north side, they got the Donna Street Crips, they got the GQs. Yeah, yeah, I was, I was, I was out there. I lived how, out there. How they was there. acting towards New York, uh, New York blood out there, like they was kind of fucking with it. They was fucking with it. It was, but by that time I was already working out, so I was, I was a cool two hundred solid. So I was moving. They kept looking at me because you know they hear about Rikers Island cutting. So them niggas kind of always thought that I was the type of nigga to eat a nigga food. So it was kind of, you feel me? Yeah. They <laughs> why, why, how they knew that you was, you was. You was talking, you was telling niggas about Rikers Island in there, or they knew about they heard, it? Nigga, they know, they know how it go down, bro. The niggas, the same way we know how West Coast game banging, they know our program too. They like, oh, you was in the island? Any nigga that tell them, oh, you was in the island? Oh, you was in, you know what I mean? So they know, they know, they know, they know exactly how we give it up on New York. You feel me? Now, when it come to Cali, it's a little different. Because on the yard in Vegas, Cali niggas has kind of got their own car. Niggas got their own car. Even though they blood and crib, they might be blood, but it's a Vegas blood, it's a Cali blood. It's like basically us in New Jersey. When I was in New Jersey, that was that was kind of terror for me because them niggas hated New York. Niggas. I was in Wildwood. I did a, I did a uh, almost a year in there for uh, for a kidnapping charge. I beat. You feel me? Them niggas hated. I was in there going crazy in there. They they was not fucking. And it was it was a super crip shit. I, I thought oh, Jersey yeah. was on some super blood shit in jail. Not where I was at. Out in the sea. I was in Wildwood. I went to Atlantic. I got locked up in Atlantic City on some pimpy shit. I mean, uh, kidnapped the bitch. I mean, it was a what kidnapped you mean? the bitch. You, you, you caught a state bid in 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 there? You mean you was in nah, a nah, county? No, no, no. It was county. Oh, you was in Atlantic City County Jail? Yeah, they send you to Wildwood. That's the that's the jail. Yeah, I know. Wildwood. I used to go to that hood out there. I used to mess with a chick that's from that that hood. What's that hood? That's right there, little projects, right across the street from Atlantic Atlantic City, like from back the, Maryland, probably back Maryland. Yeah, shit look like them first 48 little projects yeah. and shit. Yeah, White Horse Pike, Black Horse Pike, back Maryland, yeah. Oh, yeah, them niggas hate New York niggas, bro. They hate us. They sound just like us, you feel me? And no disrespect to my Jersey niggas, but them niggas was not liking me at all. Then I came <laughs> on some pimpin' shit. Then I came on some blood shit. So they didn't like pimps. They didn't like bloods. You feel me? The only thing that saved me, there was an OG, OG uh, um, nigga from, um, he was a Muslim, but he was from New York, but he moved over there. And he was like, if y'all want to get tense with him, y'all got to give him the one-on-one. He's like, that's, that's, that's he, he, he's the only thing, the reason why they ain't, they ain't finished me off. And my first day when I went to um to Atlantic City, funny story, when I came in there, I'm like, I'm, I'm already super blood mode. It's two smoker bloods that's with me, right? And uh, <laughs> they like, yo, we blood too. I'm looking at them like, that niggas are smoking the street. So boom, we get into the to Atlantic City, we get into the unit. 
They're like, yeah, 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 man, we gonna hold it down. When I get to the unit, right, this shit is like a circus. They got niggas in cells, they got mattresses all over the floor. I see, it, they bring us there like seven, seven, seven or ten deep. One of the niggas they brought in with us, I see niggas call him in the cell, like, yo, whoop, whoop him out right off the jump. I'm like, oh, this is wild. Whoop him out crazy. So now the other blood niggas, they like, yo, yeah, man, we got to stick together, woo, woo. I'm like, bro, I don't even know you, my nigga. I'm doing my program. I'm doing this. They call that same nigga that, that, that was with me. They called him in the cell. He started playing buddy, buddy. Yeah, yeah, homie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He come back down. And he like, yo, the niggas uh, want to talk to you. I'm like, yo, bro, I'm not talking to nobody. He like, yo, they want to highlight you. Got right off of him. Bing, bing, bing. So they brought me up out that unit. I got what you mean? Me. You got off on the nigga who was telling they want to talk to you? Yeah, Knox is too far. Niggas was calling me Antonio Tarver because I look like Tarver. And they was like, yo, nigga, I hit him so fast. Because I already had, I already saw the program they was doing. Niggas coming in there, they, they taking your mattress. You got a nice, hefty mattress. They taking that. You got a cool shirt. I'm not with none of that. You what you me? mean? You mean, you mean like, the whole Atlantic City jail niggas just be on some, it's a wild ass jail? It's a wild jail. And they, they stick with their hood. It's a lot of crook niggas. So the nigga come in, they asking you where you from. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm not going, I'm not explaining myself to niggas here. This ain't even my, I'm out of bounds already. So when they, when he went in there, I guess he's from Atlantic City. So he went and he chopping up with that. He about to say, oh, he a blood too. So they sent him as some lackey to tell him come up here. But I'm not with none of that. Don't send me no messages. So when the nigga said what, I got right off. Oof. Knocked his whole tooth out. Yeah, knocked the nigga tooth right out. Ding, ding. I heard the shit hit the drum. Ding, I heard the shit hit the floor. I got right off. I hit the nigga with a death punch. I wasn't waiting for none of that. You feel me? So I was kind of good in there. You know what I mean? But they was anti-pimp. You feel me? And then when I went to, in the, but the Muslims run the jail though. That's what that is. That's that's a Muslim jail. That's that's a Muslim jail. Like I, I heard the whole prayer, Jersey, the whole Jersey Muslims run anything. Bro, when it's prayer time, the TV's off and nobody could talk. They turn the TV off. Like nobody could talk. When I first seen that, I said, "Oh yeah, I gotta stay in my lane." Yeah, yeah I gotta stay in my lane. And uh, there was some one Muslim dude. Niggas wanna watch a uh, 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 Charmed all day. This nigga wanna watch Charmed all day, bro. All day. <laughs> Charmed. Bro, all day. This nigga wanna watch Charmed. So the, I, Hold I, on, on. What show, which, which show is that? The shit with the witches. The, well, I guess they just want to see bitches. So I'm like, yo, I'm tired of Tom and and uh 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 and uh uh, uh I think uh Family Guy some shit. So I'm like, yo, no, no, it was Charmed in a Supernatural. That whole shit. You feel me? <laughs> so I'm doing my rounds. I'm over there for a couple months. I'm doing my rounds. I'm gonna ask the niggas in you like, y'all like watching this shit? They're like, nah, but you know, that's what that's what he wanted to rock. He was Muslim. That's what he wanted to rock. So I'm kind of like, all right. So boom, I picked the shit. So one day, boom, I changed the channel to some uh, some, some some other shit, like some, some regular shit, bro. We don't want to watch these bitches doing spells all day, bro. You trying to get a like a a, a, a nipple, not even a nipple, like a, a cleavage shot. That's what you're looking for. You trying to get a cleavage shot or a bikini shot. I'm like, nah, we want to watch some 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 funny shit or something. So boom, I changed the channel one minute. And they be like, yo, yo, chill, don't, don't do that again. Woo, woo, woo. Nobody want to watch that. We all want to watch y'all. I'm like, all right, cool. So I peeped the vibe. I'm like, all right, word, all right. So boom, I'm chilling now. A week later, I go, I start asking. I say, yo, y'all want to watch Charm later on tonight? You're like, nah, we want to watch dude. I say, y'all want to watch? So I did my camp. Boom, I took the remote control. I put the remote control in myself. So I, I, I'm waiting for the nigga. I know it's coming. So I hear the nigga walking around. Where the remote at? Who changed the channel? Woo, woo, woo. They be like, yo, the New York nigga, the New York nigga, the Brooklyn nigga. Yo, woo, woo, woo. Kick nigga. I hear nigga saying this shit. So the nigga walked to myself. He like, yo. He like, yo, oh, 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 that's what you are? He walk outside on some making noise. I said, no, 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 come on, let's get down right now, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Like, let's get this out the way. So he come in the cell, he getting down, bing, bang, bing, bang. I get the nigga off some like, uh, you know when you when you fight a nigga and a nigga's kind of like, and you got the nigga in a sleep, like in a chokehold, but his head is like under you? I got the nigga in a chokehold on the bottom bunk. That's where my cell yeah, I want come on the top bunk. I got the nigga on the chokehold. I'm like, you good? I'm just trying to sleep him out. I'm like, you good? You good? He like, yeah, but I know if I let him go, he got the advantage because he's over me, but I got the next. I'm like, you good? He like, yeah. I said, you sure you good? He like, yeah. Boom, boom, boom. I'm like, my son, he like, yo, we good. Let, he good. Let him go. Let him go. I let the nigga go. He hooks up here. Boom. Clean shot. Bing. Rocks me. Heavy. Word. Son, he breaks it up. This nigga got the audacity. You listen to me last? Uh -huh. Say last. You hear this shit? The nigga got the audacity in myself. To wash his hands and face sitting down after the shit is over. Washing his face. 
bro. I might have took the power from Goku, the power from my ancestors, and he wasn't even looking at me. So that's why I thought, in my mind, I said, you just snuck me, and you and my son washing your hands and face. I hit the nigga with a death shot, knocked him out the cell on my life. On my, on my, on my father's song, knocked the nigga out the cell. Bing! Boom, niggas come here, boom, boom, boom. We watch Family Guy every day after that, nigga, comfortably, nigga. Got it out of here. Nigga had a fraction fucking uh, 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 nose and shit. It was all right. I mean, I got up out of there soon after that. I mean, my bill was uh, uh my bill was 150k. I mean, I hit my mom's up. She's like, she like, oh, shit, you better get comfortable. Ain't got nothing happening. Before niggas took my lawyer, I get the lawyer to hit her up. Boom. The bitch that I got quote unquote kidnapped out of pocket, I, I got in contact with her pimp. I'm like, yo, dude, you can't let the bitch come to court. Like, he like, yo, I got it, man. I said, we going to Florida, man. You good? So I sat up there for like about a year. They dropped the shit down. I mean, my, my bell was decent enough. You feel me? I hit my mom's up. She got the bell. Boom, boom, boom. You know what I mean? How was that? Yo, so let me yeah. ask you this, though. The Muslims ain't try to front on you after that? Just because of that one OG that was from New York. He said, he kept saying, he was like, I don't get at him. I got to get him to one of the OG play chess. I used to be, I used to play chess all day with him. I fucked with the chess. I'm heavy on the chess game. Heavy, heavy. Feel me? So the OG, he was the he was the Iman basically. So he kind of was just kind of like, you feel me? But then after that, yeah, you know, right before I went home, the niggas was like trying to line up, like when you find him first. I'm like, God damn, I'm not gonna be doing this shit every day. Then I find out what my you other mean? What you mean? Up. Right before you tried to go home, they then they wanted to get it on. Yeah, they like yo. One nigga, one nigga kept like inching and edging. He like yo, how this shit? <sighs> kept woofing and woofing, and I see him kind of like building a conglomerate, like yo. Now I mean, these out of towners coming over here. So I kind of felt like my welcome was overstayed because I already whooped out the man and I'm kind of poking my chest out now. You feel me? So I could already tell the tension was building up where it was like, I, I gotta get up out of here. So it was lucky enough that it happened right around the time when my bell came. I was happy to get the fuck out of there. They would've they wore me out. I, I saw it coming. I saw it coming, man. I saw it coming. Before he would die. Like I said, the Iman just kept saying, he's like, whatever y'all do, you're not jumping them. You feel me? I, I, I guess he was from Crown, yeah, he was from Crown Heights, but he was from the other side, like by 20 and some shit. He took a liking to me. He's older than me. From all these kids in early 20s, I'm a young nigga. So he took a liking to me. He was like, whatever y'all gonna do. He's like, he told me, he said, I'm not jumping into none of this shit y'all got with, with the brothers. But I'm gonna make sure you ain't gonna get jumped. So don't you ready to fight one on one? I said, I'm good with that. All day. You feel me? And in there, they ain't got no pokers, they ain't no knives. This shit. Niggas ain't cutting, they ain't no buck fifties. It's straight hands on. I'm comfortable with that. I've been fighting since fucking. I could do this all day. But I just didn't want to get jumped. I didn't want to get jumped, nigga, smash my head in the cell, put my head in the toilet, type weird shit, knock me out, stomp me out. I didn't want that. But I was all day comfortable with the one on in the cell. I could do that all day. So, yeah, but yeah, that was that episode of uh, Dirt Man. They was whooping out New York niggas. Every other day, I kept hearing the thing, like, yo, yo, yo you know your pimp partner over there? They just, they just whooped them out, rolled them up. I said, God damn, they making their way over here. You know what I mean? But, yeah, that's how that shit shit, man. That's how that shit went. That shit, the Vegas, I took that same mentality. I, Vegas was even worse, man. I had some shit. I tried to kill my silly one time, nigga. I really tried to choke him out. So at least I had to hear the shit on the intercom. They hit the intercom like, yo, what y'all doing? I'm trying to choke him out. You feel me? <laughs> I mean. Well, yeah, what yeah. happened? Which I was in a box or a regular cell? We was in a regular cell. We just, I just got out the, uh, the fish tank. You feel me? And when you first go to the, the, the level five yard, high desert, when you first go to the, the yard, they put you in a, uh, in a cell. You stay there for, it's basically uh, like downstairs, like classification. You feel me? Showers. Every, I don't know. I've never been to upstate New York. I've been in New York. I've been in, uh, in Vegas. But you stay there for about 30, 60 days. You shower every three days. And I remember there was uh, one study they brought in there in the fish tank. That nigga was younger. He kept walking around. And you know, we in the desert. So when you come outside, you make the foot trails. He kept walking in circles. And I remember one day after the second day he was in there, I said, yo, bro, you walk around one more time. Nigga, I'm finishing you in here. What you nigga mean? Went the, his... What you mean you in the desert? I mean, like, what you mean? You outside? Nah, but... The whole yard is desert. It's straight like sand, bro. It's like if you ever take a look at a picture of high desert straight prison, bro. It's a building, but outside is just dust, bro. It's it's, it's desert. It's just wind blowing, sandstorm type shit, bro. It's, it's miserable. Like, you don't see nothing. It's nothing. You just see sand. It's like sand type shit. Like you ever think of a desert with a building in the middle? That's high desert state prison, bro. Mm. So when you come That's from what outside, it's called, desert state, high desert. That's crazy. And so the so the so the floor in the yard is just straight sand. It's bro, it's no floor. It's just gr it's just sand, bro. It's dust. It's just dust, bro. When it, when it get windy outside, it's like a sandstorm, bro. 
And he was listening. And you said he was outside in the yard walking around in circles? Nah, he came in. He just came in through the fish tank. You know, we got to be in there 60 days before they classify you. So he uh. came in there. He kept walking around in circles, walking around, walking around, walking around. And I'm like, yo, bro, stop walking around. I'm like, you're working blood. I'm fucking, I'm knocking your head off. So he went on his bottom bunk. And I didn't realize it, but the nigga never got up. Every time they put in the food trays, he like, yo, I ain't gonna eat it. I'm eating nigga shit all day. I'm eating shit. Eating shit, eating shit, eating shit. Eating shit. So I'm not, <laughs> I, I'm thinking he on some like, like, just like, on some like, I don't want no smoke, you can add it. But he never got up to the bunk. So I'm eating shit, eating shit. So finally, when they do count, you gotta do a welfare count. You gotta stand up. When the nigga stand up, I look at he's standing in front of me, nigga pissed on himself. I'm like, yo, bro, what's on your pants? He's like, yo, you told me I can't get off the bunk. I hit the button. Yo, you got to get him out of here. Yo, get him out of here. I'm on the gate. Like, yo, get him out of here. Your boy just pissed on himself. Ah, right, the man got issues. Get him out of here right now. You know what I mean? So the seals come through. They're like, you got issues with I'm like, we ain't got no issues. The man got mental issues. He peed on himself. Get him out of here. But I ate good for like two days, though, man. I ate good. That wasn't an issue, though. I get I get to uh to the regular yard now. Now I'm on the main line now. I'm comfortable. They got me in the cell with some young nigga that uh he he uh he had a uh, DUI man so he hit somebody and killed him. And we chilling in there. I got my little CD playing shit. It's comfortable. I'm in there for about a few days. I don't really I'm not really making friends with myself. I ain't the type to really make friends. I'm trying to fill you out. I don't know your program. So I'm on the West Coast. That niggas that niggas lining nigga up. So boom, I got store. When I come in, I can see he had a little store and all that. The nigga hit me up. Uh uh after about a week we in there, he go, um, Hey, yo, bro, uh, yo, you think you give me something from the store? And I'll give it back to you when the store come. I look at it, he getting letters. I'm like, he got a family. He ain't, you know what I mean? He got a DUI uh, manslaughter. So it ain't like people like turn their backs on him. So I get a nigga like 10 soups. Boom. You realize you listen to bro? Yeah, I hear you. So boom, we in there chilling. Boom, boom. Store come. I'm not thinking twice about this shit. I, I, I know the nigga got it. So on, on that yard, they got an inter- intercom button in the cell. So you can hit the button and shit. The door side open so you can hit the shit like, yo, if you, you about to die or you got to let out, whatever, whatever. Shit opens every hour, it opens up and closes back up. So the niggas get the store come in, you get a super big, big bag. Big, big bag. So boom, he give me my, uh, I see this shit. I'm not even watching it because I know he got it. And I'll never forget this shit. The nigga uh, counted out the 10 suits, right? I'm on the top bunk, put the shit on the top shelf. He go, this right here is your shit. This right here is my shit. Don't touch my shit. I look at the nigga like, what you say, homie? He like, yeah, don't touch my shit. All right, this ain't gonna work. This ain't gonna work, nigga. I helped you out. So boom, in there we gotta put a sheet up. You know, taking a shit with a nigga in the cell. Nigga, put a sheet up. Nigga, walk up to the front of the door. So me, stand there on basically the door patrol while you taking a shit. So tension's a little up. I'm sitting on the toilet taking a shit. And on that yard, you get to flush once an hour. You get one flush an hour. You get one flush. That toilet only flush one time an hour. That's in. That's high desert. I went to Indian Springs across the street. I went there two after. They shit regular. You press it one time. Once you press that flush, that shit ain't, ain't, ain't flushing again for another hour. You feel me? I think it was like 45 minutes. Yeah. So you got to sit there, take a full shit, baby powder it up while you're sully in there. Sometimes niggas take a shit while you're sully go out. Y'all, you feel me? Niggas time they shit. So boom, I'm already not feeling the nigga from the comment he made. Like, that shit was kind of weird. You feel me? I'm taking the shit. The nigga lift the curtain up and walk through. While I'm sitting on the toilet. In my head, I go, I'm going to finish this nigga right here. But I don't want to get up while I'm taking the shit. You know what I mean? Shit go down. You know what I mean? Well, I ever go down and seals come in, I got to walk around with shitty ass. I didn't want that. I didn't want to go down that route. So I chill. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't want to go down that route, bro. I, I ain't going to lie to you. But in my mind, I said, all right. I know where this is going right here. So I'm chilling. And he walked. He did it like two times. I'm like, yo, bro, that's what we on? He like, man, uh-uh. I said, okay, cool. I said, can you give me that respect so I can just get up and uh, you know what time it is, right? The nigga said, all right. I see the nigga put his uh, shoes on from the other side of the uh, sheet. Boom, I, I was done. If I wasn't finished shit, I was finished right there. It, 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 we want a different time right now. Boom, I, I, I get up, put the, toilet, put the sheet up, roll it up, we get down. Boom, 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 boom. This is the first time, you feel me, that I ever felt in my life that I could have killed somebody with my hands. After we struggling, I grabbed the nigga by the neck and the nigga's turning blue. I'm choking this nigga. And I guess uh, uh, the, the seals here, the bing, 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 they on the intercom going, hey, what's going on in here? And I'm choking this nigga. Like, I'm, he's like gasping, like, I'm choking. I'm not letting him go, bro. And I mean, I'm mean, gasping, niggas' faces changing colors. And I'm holding off for dear life. 
he will come to the door. You mean you got him in a headlock, or you mean with both hands? Hands on, like like the like the uh the 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 Jeffrey Dahmer choke, like (laughs) standing in front of his face, holding up his neck, like looking him in his eye, like you know what I mean, like like that type shit. Like nigga, you violent. We going full throttle. Like we can't live in here together. And I snapped low key. You feel me? I ain't gonna lie. I snapped low key. Like like. I, I, I could see, you know what I mean? And I'm not promoting this shit, but I could see how a nigga could, could take, take somebody out the game with their bare hands. Because I was there. And the seals come to the gate, they're like, we throwing a gas bomb in there if you don't let him go. So I let him go, boom. Take us out, boom, boom, went to the home, ha uh-huh. You know what I mean? So I was comfortable. After that, they just like, yo, you the New York nigga alone. They gave me, they put me key block after that. So now I'm in the cell, the whole unit moving around. I'm just sitting there, nigga slide his shit, boom, boom. You know what I mean? So I did that for a little minute, but I was comfortable in that yard, man. I was comfortable. I was comfortable. I, I held my own. The only thing about over there is that Mexicans are a different breed. They are a different breed. You know what I mean? When I was in the Bronx, me and Jimmy used to go out and, uh, you know what I mean? We used to get drunk and uh, play knockout. Mexican nigga walk by, see so you can knock him out. On the West Coast, these Mexicans are like, like Transformers, Decepticon. They pack up. They're willing to go. They're going to stab you. They're going to cut you in front of the police, on the visiting floor, in front of your mother, in front of their mother. They they, 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 they with the uh, like, M.A., Mexican Mafia. They move on a different protocol. You know, we got bloods and cribs, and we like, oh, I don't fuck with this blood. I don't fuck with that crib. They're not on that. You Mexican, you with us. And they they, they, they move different. I ain't gonna, I respect how they, how they gangbang. Their gangbangs are different. i never seen no shit like that. The white boys, the Pepperwoods, they got their own shit, too. They ride with the Mexicans. So when we go to riots, I've been, uh, I've been in one riot, one other riot with baby, but I've been in one riot where I was a front liner in. Like, anything that's lighter than you, you try to take them down. You feel me? I seen the homie get shot in the back by the, uh, they got the mini 14s in the towel. Burnt the homie back off. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's real race riots. I don't know about no race riots in New York. I've never been in no shit like that. But over there on the West Coast, nigga, when they, when it's go time, they get everything of that race is moving on everything of that race. No holes barred. They're not going to a gun go off. When the gun go off, niggas will do the fake lay down in the dust, in that desert dust. And when it's, they stop shooting, niggas will get up and get back on again. You feel me? So, yeah, that was a different world over there. I see niggas get their shit. Yeah, they got a whole jinsu sword. They got on top of their head, sitting like an ornament, sticking out their head. Hey yo, follow my new Twitter page, Gen Pop Laz, you heard? About to step my Twitter game up. If you want there, get at me. 50, he's on super oppression time. He's like, yo, bro, look at, look at old boy, huh? Shoes. I forgot what he had on. I want to say it was the, the the Vin Baker joints or the Grandma Mars. It was something he had on that was looking very scrumptious, man. Very, very healthy. <laughs> <laughs> So boom, when I get to the island, uh, one of the main things I, I realized was, like I said, with the phone thing, I came to a house, it was one of the homies, uh, B-Ville. The homie B-Ville, he was from, uh, I'm watching how the homie running the stuff, you feel me, I'm coming in. They're like, you know, you know when you come in the unit, they're like wolf packs, everybody's at the gate, they seeing who's predator, who's prey, everybody's spilling you out. You know, hey, yo, what's up, blood? It was cracking cuz, they doing the fake 42. Back then, he's that bunch of dudes come through, it was good cuz. What's cracking? Just see, see where you at? You know what I mean? After that, you come in and feed the hyenas, man. So, boom, I get to the gate, boom. They're like, what's up, bud? At that time, you feel me? Like I said, I'm 17, 18. I'm, you know, I always want to make it clear that I wasn't somebody, but I was not a nobody. For my whole, in any prison, any jail I've been, and I'm going to make that clear. When I say I wasn't somebody, when I say somebody that you go, hey, everybody knows the people, the names that, that, that kind of did their thing. But those same names extended their prison time 10, 10 20 years sometimes. So like I said, I wasn't that, but I wasn't a nobody. I was comfortable wherever I was at. I, I, I was interacting with that phone very heavy. And in any jail, New York, Vegas. So I always, I always took that, that attitude of the phone is control. Now, when I kind of think about it, it was, it was a form of oppression. Blood was supposed to be started to, to, to stop the oppression. You know what I mean? And I don't, I don't know too much of the era before. Now I'm hearing about the era before us was kind of wild too. But my era. We, we pushed oppression, we, we, we were bullies. We were blood, we were bullies. You know what I mean? I, I, I can say that I was a part of that. I, was, I grew out from that, but we were bullies. We, we oppressed, we oppressed, you feel me? If I had a banger or a knife, I, my knife would never be to, uh, um, 
touch a, a, a 550 a regular dude, my knife would be thinking for a blood that was dirty or a crit. You feel me? If a 550 a regular dude came in the way, then you know what I mean? He falls with a knife, that Japanese suicide shit. So, you feel me? But we wasn't on that. Yeah, so I'm coming in. You know, I'm coming in, you know, I'm coming, I'm walking in, boom. They're like, yo, what's, what's popping? What's, what's cracking? I'm like, shit, your head is cracking, boom. I'm, I'm already just talking loud. So they, they already feel like, all right. Yeah, all right, this little black nigga, okay, all right, he blood. Boom, they, they already caught a couple of prey dudes. I already seen they caught some dudes already. You can just tell them from the gate, you can already tell what's going to be your first meal. You feel me? Niggas already feeling you out, how you holding your bag, how you walking in, timid, how you closing, shit tucked in. And you know, by that time, we was rocking regular clothes. So you could kind of already tell how a nigga was dressed in the street, what he was on. And, they, and, and I seen it, they had a couple fresh dudes that was kind of fresh. You know what I mean? They had the, the walk and the, the look. And when you got inside, you know what I mean? It, it was over. You know, let me hold this, let me hold this jacket real quick. Boom, that shit going on the other side. It's upstairs. I've seen enough of that. So I get in, I'm feeling things out. It's a bunch of other homies in there. Boom, I'm kind of, I'm kind of moving my thing. Like I said, at the time I was pushing the uh, Scarface Miller blood movement. For me, I had, I had left the train movement, you know what I mean? And I went to Scarface Miller. Like I said, I liked the aggression. I fed into the oppression that we was doing. I like, you know? I know right now, a lot of motherfuckers might say, oh, you're that dude shy and good or whatever, whatever. This is 20 years ago. At that time, niggas wasn't telling that boy nothing. I mean, he was running around with classic. They had a assassin Miller. It was kind of, you know, it was a lot going on. Nobody was going to say that to his face. It, it was whispers, you know, even to the point where uh, I went to one unit and I guess uh, one of the big, big homies, you feel me? I mean, no disrespect to the homies, the big trade, big is. He had found out that I was on the shot and I had left not We was in the unit, this nigga, me and this nigga would watch each other all night, I, like when the lights was out, bro. It was mad uncomfortable. I don't know if he thought that I was a missile coming at him, but he would sit there in his bed would face me and he would watch me all night, bro. And I'd sit there like that like, all night, bro. Those and all, we wake up in the position. You know when you're on the bunk, this is in a dorm setting. When you're on the bunk, you can lean up on the back, right? Mm -hmm. We just stand, this nigga just stand all night. I'm, yeah. That was that was with me. it never left anything, but I think that he felt that I was there to harm him, which that was the least of my worries at the time. So boom, back to the unit. I get to the unit. I'm like, yo, all right, boom, who got the phone? Boy Beville. All right, on me, uh, you know, you've been up north for me. Yeah, so I see the homie in there. And uh this is really the first time that uh I was exposed to, and not exposed, gotta watch that, pause that, where I, I, I witnessed homosexuality in jail. When I say that, I don't mean like anybody was doing anything, but there was a punk in there. You feel me? That's the first time I seen a punk just moving around. And, and, and not for nothing, the, I'm not, the homie never got caught in any weird shit, but that was the homie Beville punk. Boy fixed the bed, made the coffee. The boy went out to pill call, came back with the methadone. The homie had him. I don't know what was getting. I don't know, but I... I I did, I did six joints, I seen, I seen some wild shit, what? you feel me? Like I said, early 2000, but he had already went up from what I heard. He already went up and came down, I guess he was trying to a new one. So I don't know. But this is the first time I seen that. And I mean, and me always growing up, I was always told, man, don't don't incorporate with, uh, uh, you know what I mean? Anybody that, 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 that plays <laughs> the size of the team or, or snitches or thieves. You feel me? If you ever get inside the jam and you locked up, you stay away from those people because you will incorporate with that. Even if it ain't, you, you, you part of that, that that crew. So I always knew to stay away from that type of shit. So I'm watching the homie got the phone running. So boom. He wasn't fucking with the punk. He just had the punk on some like extreme dojo, like, like, like top flight security dojo. Like, like, I'll do whatever you, I don't know. I never seen no weird shit. Nobody ever said no weird shit. And we in the dorm, so I don't know. But whatever that man needed, punk was there head and foot, like, like attention, sir. Even to the point, if I'm talking to the homie, the punker walk up, I'm like, yo, bro, you gotta get up out of here. Like, I'm like, your, your, your blood, tell him you gotta move, man. Boy, boy, get up, raise his voice, nigga run off like, like, like a bitch. It, it, it blew my mind. Blew my mind. But again, like I said, I'm not putting no spun on the homie name, but you feel me? Like I said, some niggas, that's how they program. Everybody program different. Some niggas, they just rather have somebody do their shit. You feel me? The boy was coming back from pill call with the methadone, so he was making his bread. Coming back with rollies, you know, for whatever reason, Punks always got access to a bunch of shit behind the gate. You feel me? I, I've seen it. I mean, I know you've seen it. You've been down. I don't, I don't know. I don't know how it is over here. But I've seen punks. They always find a way to get involved in some shit. But the homie maximized that. His business of staying away from that. So, boom, the homie got the phone. 
and I'm just watching how he's moving. His Lion King's in there, and, and, and he's kind of he's he's being diplomatic, but he's 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 throwing his weight around. So I'm watching, I'm watching, I'm seeing this joint. I don't be talking to me, chopping it up. I'm like, yo, I might need to get on this jack. I, I, I got to freaking move. He like, we ain't got no this, this, and that, but I got the, the nine o'clock. So I'll give you the last 10 minutes. So boom, just now I'm kind of I'm kind of learning all this nine o'clock joint. Okay, boom, how they moving with that? All right, all right. Boom, I got on the jack. Boom, talk to my people. Next day, I'm filling it in, filling it in. Some blood do come in. He wasn't right. Me and the homie spanked him out. Boop, 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 boop. You know what I mean? All of a sudden, I got a different slot time there. Now my slot is is uh, 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 8 to 8, 8 to 8, 15, 8 to 8, 30. You feel me? What so you mean the nigga wasn't time. right? He was fronting like he was blood? He was fronting like he was blood. He was he was friendly, friendly. You know what I mean? I, I don't know if they still do that now, but you know, back then, when you was blood, they screwed up. You got to tell us your oath, who you under, where you from, why you turn blood. You feel me? You, you get the whole, you like, like, you getting those questions right there. You got some individuals like, yo, don't G-check me. They fighting right there. But if he was if he was really under the banner, you feel me? You would respect this act of somebody asked you, but you want to let them know you right. So that was kind of the whole thing. They had questions they asked. Now I don't think, I think now everybody's just like, I'm blood, what's up? Boom, boom. Before you, you had protocol, like, you know what I mean? Like, well, when, you came, when you came home, I, I like, motherfuckers wanted to know who he was. So he wasn't right. Boom, predator and prey. I fed into the predator. Let me get that. Matter of fact, let me get that. That was kind of the first one watch I booked. I got a fast reader with watch. I, was, I had like four watches that I booked on the island. I got a thing for the watches. I don't know why. You know, what people don't understand is that when you locked up, you want you want any attachment to the street. That's why that phone is so is so so vital. You don't want to get locked locked into this world. Like 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 jail and prison is a world. It's it's its own realm. You know, time moves different. Everything moves different. You become a different person with that. So that outside interaction, we, we, we yearn for it. We was thirsty for it. We wanted that. So that's why the phone was so brutal. Boom. So uh, I felt like the watch, having the watch was, was you know, felt like I still was kind of fresh. You know what I mean? Then, then after that, I got involved with the trinkets. And that was a different world. I, everything that was on your neck, I was putting it off with you with it. Coming right in. You're taking everything. That was, again... Feeding into oppression, trying to still be like I'm still fresh, I'm still cool. Niggas having regular clothes at the time, so you walking around really low key. If you got a watch and chain on, you come into a unit, you see anybody with a watch and chain, you know he's comfortable. He comfortable. He he all right. We all know what he doing, but he all right. So I, I wanted to be all right, and I, and I made sure I was always all right. So I'm rocking with the homie, and uh, it was a one incident, and uh. I, I don't know how this incident was. It, it was kind of weird for me because the homie Bville, he actually the first homie actually gave me a gym star too. Boom. Now I got the gym star. He beefing with some other dude. The other dude talking crazy, getting another blood. So, I mean, it, it was just, they always had a back and forth for some weird reason. So, my dumb ass, I'm fucking with the homie. He hit me up one night. He's like, yo, man, yo, we eat this nigga tonight. I'm like, what? He's like, yo, this nigga gotta go, man. He's like, I don't think he real right. And back then, a nigga just say you ain't right. And that shit spread around. And some random nigga come by you, nigga ask you for the time and hit you, boom, splash you on the spot. So, homie said, ah, uh, ah, uh, we gonna do that. Shit, I ain't care at the time. At that time, so me, we was, I was moving on anything. I done cupped a couple niggas, you know, we had the little mugs. I don't know if she was brown or green. Because, you know, it was a couple different units. I think it was brown. You know, them hard coffee cups? This is usually green. And it might be the green one Like I said, I was a couple units They had different cups Niggas cupped a couple niggas with those things Oh yeah, they was green Okay, I, 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 this is the, uh, the brown short shit It was kind of long green shit Yeah, I'm just right. deadly Yeah, it's vicious, 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 vicious And when they break apart It's a whole different, you know what I mean? A whole structure that changes You got a whole different thing You got artillery, <laughs> you got pieces Oh you know, shit, like Everybody eating with that That shit break apart so boom, the homie like, we gonna eat him. I, I didn't even ask the question. I was kind of like, all right, cool, whatever. And I remember this shit. Boom, lights getting ready to go out. You feel me? I don't know about anybody else, but as far as for me, whenever a movie's about to be made, my nerves, my nerves move. Like, it's like somebody's like the pace of my blood goes faster. And not for fear, but anticipation. You feel me? Like, like I'm preparing for, to, to, to turn into a mode where I'm gonna do something that I gotta do and we gotta, I gotta be on this point. And I remember I had to drunk, I had to sit, I'm laying next to a boy in the, uh, in the back of the unit, 
the homie the blood in front of him I remember I took my bang out and uh bro this is all my life we sitting there waiting they did the, the lights went out so they do one walk and they going back in the bubble waterfall come in but you know the waterfall the search turtles come in you know violent nigga shit I still got the burner in my hand I flipped the matches I'm still reaching under while they coming in cut a little piece of the mattress tuck it in put the shit away to this day, it was just kind of weird to me that like, a movie was about to be made and they came at the same time. I'm not insinuating anything, but that was just kind of, that was one of my wake-up calls for not, not jumping out the window. From that on, I ain't never jump out the window again. Because you red-handed with that. Like, it, it was no ifs, ands, or buts. You, you red-handed. You know what I mean? You get, you get hit, you get hit right there. So, I'm watching the shit. I'm watching how people run the phone. You know what you mean, though? What you mean? You felt like... You felt like who who said something to make that search come through? Thank you. I felt like why was it coming at that moment? Like it came right when the lights went out. I think it's like it was just kind of weird. Like I didn't, I ain't get it. You feel me? I don't know. Maybe old boy saw the play coming, and then he kind of like that could easily been that too. Let me keep it real. But in my mind, you feel me? I never had no shit with the homie with the blood with the, with the homie that uh, we was gonna do the movie with. But it was just weird that we about to make a movie and then this happened. So that was just my paranoia thinking I, don't, I ain't fuck with nobody that close again. You feel me? Then it could have been old boy, because he kind of kind of saw the move and see how we acting. You know, niggas kind of standoffish. You feel me? He might have could have felt it in hand. Boom, I made, it, I made it through the search. You feel me? Boom, wiggle out of that. I'm like, damn. I'm like, Shit. So how was that energy? How was the energy after the search in the house? Oh boy, I felt like, uh, oh boy, that, that, that was about to be the play. He was kind of like I felt like I, I was I was putting a lot of energy towards uh, the homie Bill. Like yo, what the fuck? That's crazy. Like like I, I instantly like I ain't gonna lie to you. I instantly put the energy towards him. Like yo, that's wild. I, you feel me? And I feel like old boy kind of was like looking like yo, what these niggas talking about, man? You feel me? Like I don't know. So I, every to me, everybody was a suspect. Somebody dropped the kite. Somebody did something. However it was, I, I felt like I was the target. You feel what I'm saying? I uh, really felt like I was talking. That's how that's how that situation went down. I never got to the bottom of it. You feel me? After that, uh, you feel me? Niggas gonna walk out a couple niggas in that house. A couple. I'm like, gonna lie, a couple. So, boy, I'm moving up and start. Now I got the nine to click. The only people ain't have but too many people to call. This nigga was just really sending the punk on missions. You feel me? So he really just did the phone. Let me try. Let me try. Get him like two, three ways. And I cut that in the butt. I, I was no three way king. At the time, you gotta remember. You feel me? Uh, I was on, I was on that, that that piece shit. So I had three joints out there. So I, 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 if I could get on the phone all day, I was doing the phone three times a day. I had to stop because first first red uh, red alarm went off and we got locked down. Killing. I said, no, nah, I can't get to a test like that. So then I would just do the morning joint when I get up and the night joint before I, before I lock it down. So I, I, I had to have it on that phone. So that phone is was was detrimental to me because like I said, that was my only thing to the street. And you gotta remember, I'm a young nigga, I mean, late teens, you feel me? And again, we're not, we not promoting this shit I, right now. I really, I, I don't even feel comfortable saying it because it feels nasty to, to say it, you know, because of the man I've grown up to be. But yeah, on that pimp and shit, like, I was on that. So imagine having three women out there that, that's going out every night interacting with, with males, and then you got, they gotta answer the phone. It's like, oh, I was on a date, that's why I missed it. How do I know that? You feel me? Before I went in, I was running crazy. 241st, White Plains, they knew me. Midtown, they knew me. Hunts Point, they knew me. You feel me? Queens, God Brewer, they knew me. I was out there. Like, like you know? So, I, it's the perfect opportunity. I was, a, I was a trophy if you could have booked me. You feel me? You could have booked me for one of my joints. I was a trophy because I was talking loud. I was the same person I am now. I was just, just that person even in high school. I wore a hairnet in high school. I ain't had no long hair. I was different. I was running around with an iron red flag in my pocket and a hairnet. You feel me? I, I was on that. So, so that situation goes down. I'm, I'm, I'm watching the phone thing. You feel me? At the time, the Latin Kings they was they wasn't beefing. They had their own phone. You know what I mean? The five fifties had a phone. They ain't won no war with us. Like I said, we were savages. We were savages. You feel me? The era of bloods that came in, there was no war with the Latin Kings. They, they did the truce where they was like the five alive. We banging the five. We good. No beef. No beef. You feel me? Um. So boom, all right, so boom. So now I'm, I'm feeling comfortable now. The homie get up out of here. He get rolled up for whatever incident. So now I'm, I'm, I'm seeing the phone, Bob. I'm on the phone. I'm, I'm, I'm moving now. I got the phone. I'm comfortable. I'm controlling. Nobody trying shit. Nigga had a couple of doges. You feel me? And like like I, I always remember this, and I always know this for a fact. 
A nigga with money is always gonna win. Money wins all wars. You feel me? I got a bin. I got a pocket. Shit. Everybody wanna be friends. You feel me? That tub is just to the to the to the T. From I'm throwing stone another nigga shit. So everybody wanna be friends. I'm doing the store. So it's easy to have doges and shit. It's not just ain't. You feel me? You got bloods that 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 had their own shit, but then you had a lot of bloods that was some doja shit. You feel me? Then you had uh, uh, the niggas that was banging that uh, rough rider shit. It was like they're not blood, but they they was rocking with the bloods. We had niggas like that around. You feel me? So so I was it was easy for me to to to, to Assess into that that position. Just having the phone, they see me in action. Niggas ain't really fuck with. They see you got bread. You feel me? I done booked the nigga for for a watch already, so I'm I'm chilling. So yeah, like I said, quick disclaimer: we ain't promoting the lifestyle of, of, of gang banging, drug dealing, pipping. It ain't a promotion of it. It's just understanding that you feel me. Your life can't turn around. Your life, life can't transition. You don't got to I mean, where you started ain't where you end. So yeah, we give it. Yeah, we giving dudes the psycho dynamics of this shit though. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? Like. This shit right here, this is the, the type of shit we dropping. Some dudes out there may feel, oh, they glorifying thug shit and violence and this uh, and that. This shit, Bro. for me, this therapy. For me, this therapy. I'm chopping up with a nigga that I, I see him grinding. I get a chance to kind of put my, 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 my shit that I've had inside and thinking for, for, for 20 plus years. It's therapy for me. It's cool. Somebody can see it and be like, yo, damn, I, I fucked up that shit. I went through the group home shit. Look, I went through the same shit that one nigga went through. And look, boom. Now, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a product of, 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 of the positive member of society. I do, you know what I mean? I'm cool right now. I'm comfortable. Yeah, I'm bro, cool. we got to diagnose this shit, though. Like, you know what I mean? We do this shit to diagnose this shit. Like, you feel me? People <laughs> hit. This nigga said Dr. Lass. Real talk. Now, we diagnosing the problem. When niggas hear this shit, people get to understand themselves. Like, all right, Facts. man. You know, it ain't just me. This shit is a cycle. It it's a cycle, and I got caught up in it, and I could get up out it. You feel get what I'm saying? It. Real talk. But but go ahead, bro. I ain't going to interrupt. My fault. Now you good? So, uh, 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 shit, yeah, uh, point to the niggas, the, the niggas in the comments that be doing, they like the interaction too. I'm just giving you the heads up. Boom. But, uh, shit, um, so, so now I'm, I'm kind of understanding the full situation. I'm all right. I'm comfortable. Boom, boom. Now, Situation goes up. I think I'm, I'm going to another unit. When we transfer, I think I'm in the bullpen. It's a Spanish dude in there. You feel me? Again, I'm feeling myself. I'm cool. I'm comfortable. Big store. And he kind of make the eye contact. He me boom. He's sitting there. I look at him. I'm like, yo, what's up? Like, boom. I kind of spin off. Still moving. I'm chilling. We in the bullpen getting ready to go transfer to another unit. So now I'm kind of like, all right. Spin around. Make eye contact with him again. So this time I kind of, I mean, I don't verbally say nothing, but I give him, you know, you give a nigga an extra stare down, like, like a nigga got Cyclops eyes, like he threw the extra beam, like, yo, like, we good? Mm -hmm. Like, like I, like I see you staring, like, I, like, I, like I'm, 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 I'm letting you know that I see you, you see me, like, boom, nigga don't say nothing, he just kind of look, look my way again. So I'm like, shit, I'm like, damn, this nigga, uh, you feel me, you know, right back then, and even still now, man, it was always the, you know, we said it was Latin King and Bloods, but it was always a race issue, you feel me? And, and, and it's sad in a way because I, I lived in Vegas. I did time in Vegas, and I saw the same issue between Spanish and, and Black. But over there, it's on an extreme level. Over there, it's extreme, extreme. Over here, you know what I mean? You can easily see intertwined, you feel me? Even to the point where some, some cats that's older are going to remember where I remember when they closed the books in early 2000s, but uh, when it had the 031, it changed to 021 because they had the rules of you couldn't be, um, you could you had to be black. And it was a, such an influx of Spanish bloods coming in that had to kind of get mended off. So I, mean, I, I, was, I was banging blood from that point when, when that transition came in. So he making the eye contact. I'm kind of like, yo, what the fuck? So I say, yo, bro, what's good? You know, what, what you mean was good? I'm like, oh, oh, you one of those. All right, cool. All right, all right, cool. So I'm, I'm kind of like scoping the area, make sure I got nobody trying to come behind me. You know, cause, you know, they just try to eat you for no random shit. I make sure I was just boom. So I'm like, come on, let's go in the corner right here. So we in the big bullpen. So I'm like, let's go over there. He kind of like, ah, uh, uh, he stood up. He just kind of broke it down. I'm like, man, I don't want to do that whole hold me back shit. All right, cool. We gonna meet again, bro. Boom, we chilling, we chilling. The, 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 the emotion still up. The noise starting to build up. He starts shit. Guard comes to the gate. Like, yo. I mean, during the middle of the shit, while he's trying to tell everybody where they're going to, me and niggas still, still kind of going with shit. I'm like, bro, stop doing this police shit. He's like, shut up. Uh, uh. I'm like, nigga, I'll beat your ass. Fuck this cop right here, nigga. I'll beat you right now. Like, so the cop kind of put, I hated that I had to do that, but I didn't like how he kept going with it. 
sort of cut, kind of uh, figured out the vibe. Like, you know, it's like, fuck up, you know, right to Zyla Cody, they talk to niggas like, we young niggas, so they, they talk to us like, crazy, crazy, crazy. So boom, the shit tends to die down. So now, they call in units and shit, boom. I, I they call the boys to the unit, boom, chilling, waiting, they call me to the same unit. I'm like, all right, cool. Again, my blood, it, it pushes up. I don't know, like on some, some Morbius shit, some, some flash, flash point shit, like my shit's like, all right, it's time to perform. We, I know where we going with it. So now, boom, we going up there, we, we in the, uh, uh, we in transition, we getting up there, we get to the unit, I already know what time it is. When we come in the unit, it's a bunch of Spanish dudes, it's kind of light with black dudes, and that's kind of, I mean, so now, boom, the police walk in the unit, say, yo, y'all better not do no bullshit in here, I, I, I spent off. I walk in, I'm like, yo, who blood in here? You feel me? Not for nothing with him, but I was gonna make sure I don't get jumped. That was my whole thing. You feel me? I didn't want no backup. I was I was going to back and whoop him out. Niggas like, yo, ain't no bloods in here. I'm like, what you mean ain't no what you talking about? I never been there. I was ain't no bloods in here. Like nigga, ain't no the bloods I was in here. They had some shit with some Spanish niggas over there, and that shit was gone. But when I come in, it's about uh six deep with niggas. I, it was kings mixed with uh 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 Poppy DDP, that's when that wave was, was picking up. You feel me? I, I never heard of the niggas till I moved to the Bronx. I went to war with the niggas in high school. You feel me? But I, I never knew about that shit. Brooklyn ain't no DDP. They might be now, but when I growing up, there wasn't no DDP. We had Latin Kings. Tell you the truth, I wasn't even exposed to that many Spanish people until I got up, I lived in the Bronx. You feel me? I never went to no uh, Bushwick. I was in Canarsie, Crown Heights. It wasn't too much Spanish. So boom, tends to go. We get in the unit. I'm like, all right, cool. I'm like, you know what? You know I mean, when we get in, Spanish group of dudes, what like I said, whatever they was, like the Latin King mix thing, they see the text, they call him over there. So they call him over there, and they boom, they talking to I'm like, oh shit, okay. Well, all right, I know what this is going now. I don't know if you remember the book, you remember the book, The Rob Report? Yeah. That was the, 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 the again, like I said, I didn't want to leave the street. I used to have my bitch send me subscriptions for the Double XL, Rob Report, all that shit. That was the luxury bolts, luxury watches. They always keep looking at it just to be like, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I ain't gonna lie, just to keep my mind like, yeah, we getting in two million dollars shit. I couldn't afford nothing in there, but I knew that this was out there. You feel me? It wasn't soups and rice, zuzus and wham whams. Mm-hmm. So, for whatever reason, they fumbled on the um on the inventory. You know when they when they scan the shit in, they let the CD inside. I always remember the CD was inside. So boom. I made it through searches, made it through transmit units, you know, boom, boom, made it through the, uh, with the CD. I'm like, all right, you know what time it is. Boom, I took the pages out, make sure the, uh, uh, shit with my feet right. When it turned around, cracked the, uh, uh, cracked the CD case. Niggas heard this shit. Everybody looking like, yo, what the fuck was that? You feel me? I'm like, all right, I know, I know what I'm on. It was, you I said a CD case or just the regular the CD, CD? The CD, the CD. I oh, took okay. the CD out the, out the little holster, the little paper case it was in. Mm. Connected to the to the booklet. Boom! I cracked the shit. When I cracked it, when I cracked the uh, uh, the CD, niggas looked. They couldn't see what it was, but they looked. So everybody kind of aware, like this nigga doing some shit. Boom! I'm really more of the 42 fake because I'm like these niggas established in here. You feel me? I can't just jump in. Here. Whatever it is, they took a liking. He was Spanish. He was with that. So now, boom! I get my shit. Boom! Tuck and I go to the bathroom. Like, come on. Right when I go in there and stand, and I'll never forget this shit. I don't know who this dude was, man. If you can hear this shit, uh, you, you, you go with me. I don't know if he was from bed or The Ville, but I think he was from The Ville. Older nigga. You don't remember his name, man. OG ass dude. He walked in there. He said, man, ain't nobody touching him, man. We good. We good in here. He's like, you blood? I'm like, yeah, I'm blood. He's like, cool. They ain't got no blood in here. So I'm like, all right, cool. I'm going to have the blood phone. He's like, yeah, that's what you going to do. So, boom, even to the point where after that situation died down, later on I came to the dude, you feel me? And it wasn't like, like, uh, 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 like, like I felt like I owed it, but it was more like I seen the boy, he ain't had no school. I'm like, yo, here, here's some rice and soups. And we'll, I get a nigga like three, three soups or some shit. He was like, nah, nah, I don't need three. After one is good, give me back to two. So I'm like, all right, he ain't, he ain't. You feel me? So it was also a test to see what's your, what's your angle? Why'd you come out like that? But he, he was ready, and whatever reason, they didn't want no smoke with him. You know what I mean? He looked like he was on some animal shit. Looked like he had a couple warm ups in his face already. I don't remember the homie name. I just remember like I want to say I want to say he was from the villain style. I just know it was a B area, but he was from Brooklyn. You know I was from Brooklyn. The nigga had my back. So now I press to the phone. The Spanish dudes looking like 
yo, what, 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 what you mean? Like, you got the phone, man. I got the phone. Y'all you know how I go. I mean, y'all been in every it, house. It was, it, was three it was three phones? Yeah. So they like, yo, like, how I'm like, yo, like, that's the blood phone now. Like, they like, how we doing it? Oh, boy, he came out like he mad. Like, I, I don't know what they, like, like you know, uh, uh, you know how Medusa, when they look at a motherfucker, they turn to stone? Mm -hmm. I don't know what it was, but that nigga had them niggas, like, stone. Like, he, he, he backed me up, and they, they went with it. And I'm making sure all the blacks was on the phone now. Boom, boom, boom. I'm feeling comfortable now. I'm like, all right, good, cool, cool. I'm liking this, you know what I mean? He ready whenever I'm ready. Any nigga that was in that unit, they gonna hear this, they gonna remember because all the Spanish niggas, they used to scratch the uh, back row and we in the sink in the day room. Me and old boy waited till they went to the yard, booked them, and when they came back, we was armed and ready. They knew we, we, we booked them, came making noise, they impressed us. If you was in that unit, you remember the situation. Yeah, that's me. You feel me? Like I said, it. I, was, I wasn't somebody, but I was not a nobody. You feel me? I, I was comfortable. So boom, so now this is all, this is all, all feeding into just the oppression of the phone. So now, this kind of Lisa, I'm just kind of giving the basis of how that phone just affected everything. I was in that unit, I was comfortable. So now they sent me to the, now I'm in the south side now. This is, I mean, this is the whole other side right now. Same procedure, you feel me? Make a move. On that time, too many niggas ain't used the phone, so it wasn't, you didn't really have to do shit. Just gonna be like, whoever by that front cell, when you get out, flip my shit over on that last count. I'm, I'm getting straight to there. So, Again, oppression, oppression, oppression. At that time, niggas is on everything moving. So, this is a nigga named uh, 50, 50 of Blood Group. He's an interesting character. So, I mean, niggas know what I'm talking about. Like, I mean, I know this respect, but I think legally he was a mix. He's a short dude. He's very, like, very, very short. But for whatever reason, when he came in the building, niggas was fucking with him. It was up 50 of Blood Group. Uh, 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 and we went to move into anything. They was on. They was fucking with the homie. So, you know what I mean? Yeah, I guess, you know, keep it real, you probably had a Napoleon complex. I know I would if I was, you know what I mean? If I was there. Like, I'm not saying short person, I'm saying drastically short. Very visibly short. You know? So, boom, the homie come in there, he throwing his weight around, we chilling. Boom, he ain't got nobody to call, he pressing for the phone. This is a whole different unit now. Some dude comes in at the time. Remember when I told you when I came in the unit and everybody walked to the gate and they were asking you, yo, where you from? Ah, 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 ah. Now the situation's changed. I'm here for a while. I'm on, I'm one of the niggas on the gate now. I'm, I'm yo, oh, where you knew I came from? Okay, cool, cool. So you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of playing chess with the shit with just to kind of see what's going on. Some dude comes in. <clears throat> uh, he, he was kind of fresh. I ain't gonna lie, he was kind of fresh. He walks in, he comes in. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, but he looked kind of weird because he kept trying to be friends. You feel me? Nigga don't know me from a hole in the wall. They're like, yo, I heard you the store. And you think you gonna throw me something? I'm like, what? And he like, yeah, uh, you think you throw me? I'm like, yeah, I'm doing a one for three and shit. You feel me? Like, you blood? And he's like, nah. I'm like, one for three? Like, well, I ain't got no bread. I'll get it back to you, though. You feel me? I'm supposed to get a bread in a month. So I just, I'm like, well, I'm like, that was a bold move. Just walk to the nigga's cell. So I'm like, all right, cool. 50, he's on super oppression time. He's like, yo, bro, look at, look at old boy, uh, shoes. I forgot what he had on. I want to say it was the, the the Vin Baker joints or the Grandma Mars. It was some shit he had on that was looking very scrumptious, man. Very, very healthy. You feel me? I'm looking, so I'm, I don't want to feed into the person right now. I'm kind of I'm comfortable right now. You feel me? At this point, I got one of my joints making sure I got back on in. I'm selling back on couches, 50 cash, Western unions. I'm selling fingers. I got, I guess I had a nigga to wash the dishes. I got a nigga to heat the coffee up. I was all right. It was kind of, it was cool for me. So, and if I want to be real, because I'm not going to lie, I'm not going to lie now. This shit's too big for me. That's really the main reason. I wasn't going to book the shit to give or try to sell. I wasn't with the bartering system. I wanted to get that and throw it on the steeps, slide on the visit, real comfortable. It was too big, so I ain't feed that. So the uh, uh, homie 50 like, ah, let's get him. Ah, I'm like, bro, chill, man. He's like, we, should, we can't wear this shit. Like, I mean, so he like, yo, I think he crit. Ah, 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 ah. So I'm like, oh, you going that route. So niggas had a way of niggas talking to niggas to find out. Because, you know, back then, the Crips had to, to ride low. They had to stay undercover. Niggas they had two type of niggas. Niggas that was came in Crip and, 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 no, three. Niggas that didn't come in at all that was Crips. I'm not going in there. You had the niggas that came in Crip and, and, and you know what I mean? You ain't getting whooped out right that first five minutes, but it was coming down the line, it was gonna get you. 
and you had the niggas that didn't say anything and they low rided and they tried to stay out the way and I mean be cool with the bloods until another nigga come in like yo nah I know him with the crib and then that, that go down you feel me I seen a nigga that do that shit nigga that actually gave me a loss in the street woke me out in the street in high school seen a nigga low riding in, in, in the visiting he was crib he was around some, some, some grimy bloods and I could have put him out there and I looked at him and he looked at me and said yo what up and I looked at him you know what I mean? And I took the loss he gave me. So I seen him after that. He had just got hit up. You saw somebody hit him like five times. And I was getting ready to get off. And he's like, I just got shot. So we ended the beef. But he gave me a loss. He, he gave me a loss. Put the jacket over the head. Did the tambourine and shit on my shit. In high school. But it was away from the school, outside of school. So I ain't take the popularity. I was all right. You feel me? So boom. I asked the nigga, what neighborhood you from? He said, I, 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 this is the nigga in the unit with the fresh cakes. So, boom, how I do it, I do the 42, do the curveball, and I'm like, yo, I know you ain't trip, but I know you got some homies this trip, right? I know, I know you got some homies. Go over there, I know you got your friend, son. Slipped up, said, yeah, ah, uh ah. -uh. I'm like, ah, oh, shit. So, boom, niggas pressing, I'm pressing, we asked him for the phone. You feel me? He wasted three ways, I gave him a couple three ways, boom, we wasted three ways, so niggas is just keeping him, keeping him right there. You feel me? He was, a, he was on some doji shit, like, you feel me? 50 kept getting ready to whip him out, I'm like, nah. Leave him alone. So boom, the nigga um come to the back. Well, I mean, I'm in the last cell. He come there, I'm chilling with the homies. Walk in, I'm like, yo, bro, don't walk in my cell. Not get out, not. Nigga, get out of knock. So you can tell the kind of character he was. Just off that. So he come out, he's like, yo, what's going on in the law library? I'm about to go out there. I see my one of my friends or something, the thing. I'm like, yo, bro, listen, you got no business over there. Your case that have nothing to do with law. You gonna go out there, you gonna get yourself in some shit. Just chill, relax, bro, stay out the way. Boy, like, nah, that's my friend, man. He gonna give me some cigarettes. Some, 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 some. I'm like, man. Yeah. That's what the nigga came to the cell and asked me. He asked for a stick. That's what he was no soup. He asked for a stick. He was smoke, yeah. So the boy said that shit. I'm like, yo, bro, don't go to the don't go to the uh, law library. I know the law library. That's basically a meetup spot. Put it up, pray. Niggas is feeling who's who. They telling this nigga's a plate. He's food. That's a bunch of politics. I ain't wanna be in that. I'm trying to, to walk my time down. So boom. Chilling in the unit. Go on smoking, nigga come out of my cell, you like yo, some other random nigga. You feel me? I, I wanna say it was the homie shot from uh, from uh, Webster. He come out, he like, yo, they, they booked the boy for his feet. I'm like, what? He like, yeah, boy went to the little library, they got him for the feet. I'm like, who got him? He said, the homies, the homies got him. I said, nah. See the boy, he walking around with the big ass, some big ass attackies on his shit, flat, 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 flat. So I don't say shit. Nigga fit to come to the cell. He like, see, I told you, I told you. So now I'm kind of like, damn, you feel me? Like, I, 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 I was more mad, like he was my kid, and I told him, come in for the street lights. I was mad. I had no business being here, but I was mad. And then I'm like, yo, you let these niggas book you. Like, <sighs> all right, let's see the temperature going on. So now, <clears throat> again, turning them all go on. I go to nigga's cell, I hit him up. I'm like, yo, listen, man, you let the homies book you, bro. I told you not to go. Bro, eight a week, bro. Niggas need niggas need three dollars, bro. You feel me? I said six niggas. I got some like three. He like what? I'm like niggas need three dollars, bro. Every week. Ah 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 ah. And this is also the team fifty down too, cause he kind of want to go ham on a boy. So shit going on like that. Ah uh, ah. Uh, he like uh, uh, what? Said some weird shit. You know what I mean? And then I just, I found that as a reason. So I'm like, alright, cool, good. Alright, we'll see what's up. So the nigga walked out and go to the uh, to the day room, go down a little, the little, the, the little walkway down from the, from the uh, cells, go to the day room. And 50 come in, he's like, bro, we about to bash him out right now. We not with none of that shit. I'm like, you know what? Do what you gotta do. You feel me? Do what you gotta do. It's all good. So now I walk down. Again, every time some shit about to go down and I personally know, I try to get on that phone and tell my loved ones, hey, you feel me? Like I said, I got three, three women out in the street. I got, hey, boom, boom. Hey, yo. Uh, if we locked down, some shit went down, I'll be back out so I'm not going to hold this incident about to happen. I wasn't about to get my hands dirty. I had no reason for what? I was already, first of all, I tried some extortion shit. So that was already some wild move already. So I don't want to do that. And the nigga, he got booked for his shoes. You think he get whipped out, you know what I'm saying? trying to extort me? So I wasn't trying to get my hands dirty. So I told niggas, do what y'all got to do. Y'all been done, whip them out. So when I get to the phone, it's by the day room. By the day room, I, I, I see the niggas going in, they close the day room door, boom, the door, they get up on the boy. They whip up, whip up, whip up. CO, CO chick, she was there when uh, I seen the homie Bling Blau, FBI, talk crazy to her. 
she come out trying to see what's going on. I close the door in the day room. I'm still on the phone. The nigga come out. They slamming him with chairs. He run out. For whatever reason, when he run out the day room, I'm going to be by the phone. He charges me. In front of the CO bitch, charges at me. Like, I mean, weak ass swing. I still got the phone in my hand. I weave them and whoop off them a couple times with the phone. Hit them, run up, run up the little ramp, go inside the cell. You feel me? At the time, I had a real Russian dude. We used to fuck with him, call him Russia. He caught a cool little body. He used to stick one for a while. But he knew how to pop the doors, open it in the cell with a plastic bottle. He used to flatten it up, do a hot melt a little bit. He used to lock us out. So I was out on every tier. So that, that, that was the way to maneuver out there. I know other niggas probably figured it out. That's how we was able to get locked out. And you know, the seals know who's who. They see what's going on. They, they, they kind of like, they see the influence in the unit and they want to kind of befriend you. They don't want to be an enemy and they don't want you gone because they know it to be lawless. They, they, the, the, the guards, captains, seals, they know that there's there's a pressure going on. They know that somebody running this and know that it has to go like this. In our unit, in any unit, in any jail, any prison, the inmates run it. They know that. So they always want to keep a certain eye on who they feel is influential, keep it cool. So if it, if it could be like avoided, any kind of tension, they'll use that as an advantage. You feel me? So they already knew that. So she used to always see me out on both tiers. She never said, like, yo, Ben, what you doing out? Oh. I had to make a call real quick. She's like, how you? I'm like, ah, 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 ooh, dip off. We get off. I get off on the dude right there. He running the cell. She come out. I put my hands up with the phone. I'm like, you see me? I was just on the phone. The man came out here. I don't know what's going on. She said, lock down, hit the pin. You know what that is. Everybody locked down. They grab one of the other homies up. I hear them keep walking down to get to my cell. The captain like, um, you know, you were, you were I'm like, yo, I don't know what's going on. I don't already uh, heard, heard niggas say like, like, yo, he was involved, but the CO bitch was like, I was on the phone. I told the captain, like, you see me, I was on the phone. You can ask me. I was on the phone minding my business. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if he got confused, but I was in none of that. The CO bitch backed us up. Backed me up, personally. Boom, so now I'm back in the unit. So now I feel untouchable now. All right, shit. I'm, 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 I'm on cloud nine. I remember when you had the other, um, the other video where I think Saquon and, uh, and Squeak was talking, and then he said, oh, yeah, it was a little trinket. Nigga said, nah, no, I don't know little trinkets. That's a fact. There's no such thing as anything little trinkets. Everything that's 10K, 14, no matter how small it is, it's going to look like a hurt when you want that. So now I'm back in the unit. I'm chilling. They come to my cell like, yo, some uh, uh, dude came up in here right now. Ooh, we got a nice shit on this neck. I'm like, that's me. I got that. That's me. That's me. He's calling dibs. I'm like, that's why I'm on that. Nigga 50 with me. I know 50 of you hear this. I know you remember this story. So boom, the nigga come in there. Go to the cell, I come right in after that. Mm-hmm. It was good, uh, where you from? Uh, I, I, I'm like, Benny's like, yeah, King. Well, no disrespect to the Kings, man. Like I said, we was young. I'm like, oh, all right, cool, cool. Oh, all right, all right. So I'm like, yo, we don't really, uh, I don't even got no King phone over here. So I mean, they got that phone over there. Everybody else using this shit right here, the blood phone. You feel me? No pressure. But he like, yeah, it's all good, it's all good. I go in the cell now, I'm talking to the homie 50. Niggas go down the tier, he be making his, his way. I, 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 he talks to some uh, Spanish dude that we know. One of them, uh, he's a little rough rider, Doja nigga. Doja nigga, I catch him and say, yo, come back in, come here. He's coming out of my cell. I'm like, yo, here, bro. I ain't I'm about to smoke this shit. I ain't gonna smoke it. Yeah, just get a nigga a quick little uh, tobacco roll. I'm like, yo, what old boy was talking about? He like, yo, he was just like, yo, any kings in here? Yo, uh, why, why we don't have a Spanish phone? I, 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 so I'm like, shit, that's, that's it. That's it. I need that, I need that, I need that shine. I need that Mr. T right there. So boom, I tell the homie 50, he's like, yo, we're we making a movie, go back to my cell, we plying on the shit. They get like, yo, we gonna go in the cell. I said, nah, we can't go in the boy's cell like that, man. That's, what that's what, what type of like, chain you said he had again? It was a cool little baby, baby rope, man. Like, now look at that, it is a baby rope, man. This shit was like some, like the shit they get the babies for christening and shit. It was a little, but it was a trinket, it was nice. It looked good, it looked like something you'd be in the street. I can take my pictures, I go on a visit, it, it was good. You feel me? I wanted that. I, I need that. I, I, I look good on me. Look, I like it. I had the watches already. I was cool. And I think I had another little. I had another little trinket too. I had already booked before that. So I was like, yeah, this is it. It's Mr. T time. So the homie fifty like, yo, we gonna go in the cell. I, I, I'm like, nah, 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 nah. We gonna, we gonna get him in here, bro. That look crazy. We ain't, we ain't going in that man. So I mean, shit get crazy to get locked in. Anything go down now? So I go. I tell one of them those things. Go look out. Go to the front. Collect the phone. If you see people come out, scream out. So old boy get inside the cell. He's coming in, bro. He's standing in the door. I'm like, come inside, come inside. He sit down next to me. You know what I mean? No disrespect to the home 50, but 50's short. 
So like, you need, like when a nigga sitting down, he kind of like in low key like, I level with old boy. <laughs> you know what I mean? So he like, yo, the homie 50, he's still leave the truck, I'm by the door. I'm sitting back just watching the play. The homie 50 like, yo, we need that chain, ah, 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 ah. The boy like, what? I'm like, he like, boo, I don't say nothing yet. He going, ah, 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 So now I come in with the nice, friendly extortion. Again, it was oppression, I was younger. I come with the friendly extortion, like, listen, ain't no kings in here. You feel me? Like, just give up the change, it's cool. I'm gonna give you all $30 and some food. I ain't got it right now, this shit for the store. I'm getting thirty dollars come in. I'm gonna hook you up. I got you. He like, uh, I'm like, oh yeah. I'm like, you see what the homie on? I'm not even like trying to get on that wave with you, but we just trying to. You feel me? So he like, like do some shit. Like he like sixty. I'm like, nah, bro. I got thirty for you, bro. You talking crazy? He like try to like fake take it off, but like real slow, like like real real slow, like like he doing this shit, shit out of yellow. He inching. I'm like, bro, what you doing? You know, like, like, that's, the, come on. He like, ah, uh, ah, uh, he fit to get off on a beam. So they, 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 they going at it, da, da, da. I don't know, to me, I might have had a bad visual, I might have had a bad angle, but it didn't look good for the home. It didn't look like it was in a, in a favorite position for the home. I, I might have seen it wrong, it's a long time. He probably was really good winning it, and I just thought it wrong, but it didn't look favorite for the homie. I get in, I grab boy up, I move up, I get the, get the, get the chain piece off him. He boom, get him out the cell. He's like, yo, let me get that. Ooh, ooh, come on, come on. You already got one. I said, bro, listen here. They just booked the chain right now, right? We just booked it, right? They gonna say these niggas just booked the chain. They got it on them. Show me if you tell. Where are you gonna put it in yourself? It should look like the Sahara Desert. There's nothing in there. And you got the three suits I gave you. No disrespect to the homie. Again, before you, but you, like, you ain't got nowhere to move this shit. I'm like, bro, I got a whole store. I'm gonna crack me a little bag of rice, slide that shit in there, bury it at the bottom. They're not going through 50 bags of rice. They're not doing all that. So, and I got a trinket on my neck, so they're not gonna press like for me to chill. So now, boom, shit, boom, he come out, he bleeding, he run out of shit. Boom, I already know what time it is, I hit the pin go off. And I'm like, all right, cool, so fix up my cell, I'm chilling. Got my little radio in the ear, you know, I need a little see through Walkman. I'm chilling. It wasn't a Walkman, but whatever it was, it was fire at the time. You can hear some music again, trying to adapt to the street. So I'm chilling. And I hear them boom going through the cell. I hear them go to the homie 50 cell. So now I'm trying to get really, really low. Ah, 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 ah. I hear the homie 50 screaming in the hallway. He's like, nah, ain't nobody to take money. He the thief. They heard he was still. I hear him screaming, ah, 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 ah. So now the COs, they, they get quiet for a minute. All of a sudden, I hear open 31. They pop my shit. God, They like, yo, you again? Because you get remembered from the incident with the phone shit where I'm trying to skate it out. So now it looks like, all right, you're doing a little bit too much. I'm like, yo, I try to play the, uh, uh, he the thief. So I'm like, yo, I just, I don't know what's going on. I heard somebody was stealing the right. I didn't take shit. I'm like, I got my own stuff. Why don't I like stealing the chain? They like, ah, 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 ah. Captain come back to me. He like, they, they booked 50 off the jump. Booked him, get him out of here. Captain come back. He was like, this is my second incident with you. You feel me? He's like, I got to get you up out of here. I'm like, what? He's like, yes, you got to move. Everybody's bloodshed. You got to move you out of the unit. I'm like, nah, I'm good. He's like, what you mean? I'm like, I, I got a time here, my business, my, my family, I got a phone. Like, this is like, I got family out there. I got a, you feel me? This, this is going to mess up everything I have going on. He's like, he like, man, I ain't got nothing to do with that. Come on. I'm like, I'm not saying that you, whatever you know you put me in, you can go on right off. And it's funny too, because we walk in, I got my shit packed up. And he stopped and turned. And he said, yo, I'm getting, uh, 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 uh. He said something about his ship getting off or some shit. Ooh, he's like, yo, don't have me have to come here and shit, nigga. You, you're gonna get buried in the hole. I'm like, man, I'm like, I don't want to be no other unit. So now he's kind of like, all right, you really trying real. Now I'm thinking about it. He's like, nigga, you feeling to stay here. You trying real hard not to leave. You getting up out of here. So now they sent me to a unit. And this is the, the basically the final chapter of the phone epidemic. They sent me to a unit. So now I'm already like, all right, cool. Now I'm on some bullshit now. I'm about to just come in here on some straight bullshit. I come in here on the nighttime because you know it's nighttime when we did the movie. Everybody kind of lights out, everybody under their seats. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm not really seeing much, you know what I mean? I'm not seeing niggas up, niggas ain't talking, it's, it it's kind of weird, look real square in there. So I get on my bunk, boom, I see the boy next to me. I'm like, yo, who run the phone? He's like, yo, it's not really like that around here. It's kind of real uh, chill, everybody just kind of said their next. I'm like, you know, Blush Randolph, he's like, yo, he's like a uh, supposed blood, but when the Crips came right here, they ain't saying that. I said, Crips, he's like, yeah, nah, I ain't no Crips here now. But he said, when Spanish dudes do this, and he said this, I'm like, yo, so, all right. So I'm like, all right, yeah, well, I, don't, I came from 
some tension, hostility. I liked that I was comfortable. I was scared. I, I was good. Even though I was in the cell side, like I said, I was able to get out whenever I wanted to. So I was comfortable. You feel me? And they put me back in the dorm with the squares. So now, breakfast time. I'm up for breakfast. I, I'm looking around. Shit looking weird and all that. I'm like, yo, I can't stand this shit. I go to the uh, uh, to the bubble. I'm like, yo, what are you kept up in that, man? Like, yo, this shit weird. She's like, you keep trying to uh, um, roll up. I'm like, nah, before I do something crazy, give me a second. You got a problem with something? I'm like, yo, I just don't want to be here. She like, man, she like, she looking at me like, man, nobody's trying to hear none of that weird shit. So, boom. I'm like, all right, cool. I dip off. Sleep on sleep. Wake up. I don't think I saw that. Sat on my bunk. Wait, you know, everything packed up. I'm waiting until the first time the tear come out to the phone's loose. So, boom, I wait. Throwing lights going, you know, put the lights on, everybody moving. <clears throat> Walk right to the phone. I'm like, yo, man, all right, cool. I disconnect the phone. I disconnect the phone. Go and go back to my bunk, sit down. So now I'm sitting down. This is 10 in the morning, so you mean know, 9, 10, whatever the time they open up the day room and the shit, start moving. Now niggas are starting to get up. I hear niggas whispering like, what the phone? I'm hearing the shit, I'm hearing the shit. Yo, we got the phone. I hear the phone, nigga. Oh, good, that nigga. Oh, uh, uh. Nobody say nothing. Nobody say nothing. Niggas is kind of like, they walking by the park, like, trying to look to see if they see the phone. Like, I'm like, what? And then some random nigga came up. Some guy, he was kind of like big brother guys. He walked up, like, yo, you got the phone? I'm like, yeah, I got the phone. Niggas trying to so, so get down from the phone with y'all on. He like, bro, nobody's doing nothing like that. We don't, <laughs> he's like, you in the wrong house. Uh, 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 uh. Nobody's, man, we're not with that. This is cool. We do spreads every night. I said, I can't do this shit, man. So, boom, 10, 15 minutes go by. Uh, I see somebody go to the bubble. I'm like, oh, it's like that. He opened his snitch. He even, like, do the subs. I see this nigga walk right to the bubble. Bitch come out. She's like, yo, where's the phone? If you don't have the phone in, in, in 15 minutes, we locking this down. The search coming in. Ah, 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 ah. So now niggas is up, everybody waking up, you hear niggas whispering. Yo, who got the phone? Yo, what's up? I'm not trying to get locked down. I'm like, ah, ah, yeah. I'm like, oh man, this is type of shit. So I guess the bitch already knew I had it because she came out one last time and said, like, we need the phone here. This is not going out. And she looked straight at me. I'm like, ah, right, fuck it. I walked to the phone, nigga. This is all my life now. Bash the shit like three times. Boom, boom, boom. Broke the shit. And then just grabbed my bag and walked to the gate. You feel me? Again, ignorancy. Juvenile, not thinking right, but like I said, that phone, man, that phone, motherfuckers realized it, it was a power symbol. It, it uh, it showed authority. It gave you contact to the outside, you know. So we went for that. So that was kind of, I mean, some incidents that happened with the phone and how that uh, that phone was so detrimental, and a lot of people got permanent marks on their face. A lot of people got, you know, bad situation, lost time behind that phone. Because we're yearning for contact, I mean, to the outside, man. Yeah, man. That's it, though, brody. Yeah, bro, you know, a lot of people don't lost their lives over that phone on Rikers Island. That's a fact. That phone, man. It, it, it's evil. It break it, but we, you be like, any, any nigga know, like you, you didn't even gangbang it. You, you was on your shit for that phone. You, I need that phone. You feel me? And, and it, it shows you, man, like, it ain't. In prison and jail isn't full of a bunch of gangsters. That's the misconception. You feel me? It's more prey than predator. It is. It's not like if the if like if the jails. Well, I don't know about fucking uh level five in California. Them niggas is all predators. Them niggas out there trying to kill each other every chance they get. It's a different world out there. But for the most part, it's always going to be prey and predator. You feel me? It's always going to be more people that don't want to smoke than people that want it. But the niggas that want it won't have that phone. You know what I mean? You gonna have that phone? You gonna go for it? You gonna go for it at any chance? I mean, when I went to uh, Vegas, I did time in Vegas. That shit, man. I did that shit with the phone. Niggas looking like niggas is not on that old bit, bro. Like, you know what I mean? It wasn't. It wasn't like that. You feel me? Every chance I got, I, I tried to do it. I did the oppression with the, the newspaper. Newspaper used to come in up county. I used to take that shit and put it myself. I got the newspaper. Nobody see it. Till I, just weird shit. Just you feel me? Just just ego. Just you know what I mean? Anger and ego. Just coming out in the wrong fashion. You feel me? If I, I mean, when I learned to start working out in, in jail prison, I got big fast because I had to turn all that same aggression and focusness. And the same way I could go out and try to be and, and be seen and be loud and be this gangbanger, the same way I put that focus in working out properly, getting my weight up. So I'll turn this to that, man. Yeah, that phone is different. Hey, yo, follow my new Twitter page, Gen Pop Laz. You heard?
about to step my Twitter game up. If you want in there, get at me. Right, my sister, right in front of me told me that. You feel me? And I mean, I didn't take it as no pussy bitch shit. I took it as, nigga, this for real. We doing this shit like this how we move it. Uh, I was born in Crown Heights, you know what I mean? Crown and Utica. You feel me? 1985. You feel me? Kind of, I mean, mid-90s crack era. My peoples ain't come from no, like, you know what I mean? You know, everybody got the hood niggas with the story like, yo, Oh, my mom's did drugs, my dad jail now. Nah, my people's was in there. They was Haitian, so they wasn't really mixing all that. You feel me? We seen, looking through the window, I seen a couple of hood niggas. I heard the shit, decepts, but we ain't really run with that. You feel me? I went to school in like uh, 189, Rutland and Sutter. That was the train station there. So we got exposed to Brownsville real early. Real early, nigga like me got, got put on to some shit. You feel me? Fighting, regular shit. Dad died, regular shit, regular hoodlum shit. You know what I mean? Most niggas don't realize, like, as young dudes, we kind of infatuated with the music. The music is what gets us. We see the bandanas, the baggy jeans, the fashion. I even got a time where uh, my mother was supposed to give me a, a leather jacket. She was going to give me an Averex. The Streets is Watching DVD came out. You know, the shit with the Jay-Z. I told her I wanted that. So she said, you have to make a sacrifice. I said, all right, I want that. She got me the streets watching DVD and bought me a South Pole leather jacket. You know <laughs> South Pole? Yeah, it, it was ugly. It was ugly. Maybe blue South Pole. I remember it clear as day. It, 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 it was rough. It was rough. But I, I made it I made it look good. I take it off and I got to school. You feel me? Tucked it up. You feel me? Kind of moved like that. <laughs> so boom, after that, I started running away. I started running with some Brownsville niggas. Uh, um, he was repping a little click with NFO, no fear ones. Told me I ran away from home at like about 11. So from then on, I was exposed. Are you right ran now, away from, what you ran away from home for though? Shit, kind of wild story. My mom, after my pops died, my pop died of cancer. I literally watched him like deteriorate in front of me. But you know, I'm young though. I'm like 9, 10. So we not really understand. We just think, all right, maybe he's just a little sick. You feel me? So I'm not understanding that. My mom bought me a Super Nintendo. My mom hates video games. She bought me a Super Nintendo, so I guess that was just kind of throw us off with me and my little sister. She's five years younger. Boom, we in the house in uh, Crown Heights or Crown in Utica. She fucking with some dude who's a bus driver, nigga named Bob. I mean, nigga, it, it was kind of weird. You come home every day at five o'clock. Me and my sister do weird shit in the house, play fake baseball, bowling. You know what I mean? Do kid shit. You know what I mean, I treated her like she was a boy. I, I really wanted a brother, but I love her to death. So I guess in the living room, there was a TV. My birthday, August 11, 1985. The TV got my exact birthday on the back of it. So I remember one day I hit my mother at work. I'm like, yo, can I put the TV in my room? It's in the living room, nobody using it. She said, yeah. So I'm over here like, all right, cool. So I take the TV, put it in my room. Nigga Bob comes off the school bus right at five. He like, where the TV at? I'm like, you'll sit in my room. You know why? I said, my mom said, I forget it. He said, no, she didn't. I'm like, yo, I'm telling you she did. So I'm like about, about 11 right there, about 11. Nigga puts his hands on me. Boom, whoop, whoop. I mean, I'm a little nigga. So even though I'm fighting niggas in school, he's still a grown man. Whoop, 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 whoop. He does that and leaves. I'm like, yo, at, by that time, I was already cutting school already. I was already, you know what I mean? My mother, she worked hard, so she couldn't really focus on it. So I was already dabbing in the school, in the streets and all that. You know what I mean? Hanging around with the older niggas that used to chill around. Show me a bunch of niggas from the ville used to come up there and kind of post up. Talking to the young bitches. Now I think about it, it was kind of a little uh, Kelly-ish, but that ain't my business. They, <laughs> they, they did what they did. I mean, the drinks was going with it, they was cool with it. So I remember it, and I'm like, yo, shit, I'm going. My mom just bought me a pair of um, the Gary Payton zip-up joints, white and black shits. I, I remember that clear as day. So I'm like, yo, once he left, I'm like, yo, I'm not cool with this shit. I'm going, I'm going home. I'm getting up out of here. I, I had a book bag. I ain't grab no clothes, I ain't grab no toothbrush, no soap. I grabbed the Super Nintendo, and she got me. I put it in the backpack, and I put a hoodie on and walked out. So boom, I don't know where I'm going. I'm looking for the older niggas that I used to rock with. So boom, I'm taking a walk. I go up, you know where Rockaway Boulevard at, right? Mm -hmm. In East New York, so that's where my school's at, PS 189. I walk to the school, don't see nobody. It's getting cold outside. I look, I said, shit, I'm about to turn around. I look across the street, I see one of them niggas that used to, uh, that used to just hang around the school. Nigga, uh, from NFL, like I said, a little clique I was with. 
nigga didn't belong. Pause. I don't know. That, that shit weird now I think about it. You feel me? But I don't know. He on the other side of the street. It's a big, like, uh, um, intersection street with four, four streets going across. So it's a big street. And I see him. I got the whole shit, my backpack on. And I'm like, yo, yo. Boy, turn around, look at me. He like, yo, what you doing? He told me to come across. I run across the street like a little kid. He told me, boy, he like, what you doing? I'm like, yo, tell him the story. He put their hands on me. He like, yo, come with us. He with one other nigga. He go to, um, I want to say, I want to say either it was, uh, it was a Tompkins. It might have been Tompkins, but whatever project it was, whatever low projects it was. You feel me? These niggas ain't got no, I'm thinking these niggas is the big homies. These niggas ain't got no home. These niggas is bum niggas. But I don't know. We go into project building. They smoking BDs at the time. I know you remember the BDs. Yeah, I was just talking about those the other day on live. Smoking the BDs. They had the weed too, but I was, even though I was, like I said, 11 years old, I was still kind of like weed. I'm Haitian parents. They, they call everything crack. So weed is crack. Coke is crack. Heroin is crack. Everything that's a drug is crack. So I ain't really want to fuck with the weed. I hit the BDs, lungs coughing, boom. We get in the staircase. They like, yo, you want to get down with the NFO shit? I'm like, cool. Boom, fight one nigga, get down with him. I fight the other, the long nigga, he start kicking, trying to stomp me out. Oh boy, like, yo, chill, chill, like, yo, you know, it's a kid. So they like, yo, they fuck with me because they realized I was ready to fight. I ain't had no choice. I wasn't going back home. I'm already, in, I'm already in the Ville. You feel me? I already took my backpack. And out of that whole thing, the coldest part about it was that when I was walking out, like I said, my sister's five years younger. And she was like, uh, she's probably about six, seven. And she was like, yo, Jerry, where you going? And I remember her face. And I was just like, I can't do it. And that was the, the biggest hurt to me because I felt like I left her. You know what I mean? I apologize later on, but that was the biggest hurt I ever got. She's like, yo, this man put his hands on me. And I was right. It would have been any other situation if I wasn't right. But I was right. She said, I can get that TV. I was right. So, boom, we in the Ville. These niggas ain't got no home. We sleeping in projects. I, I, I could probably be in about three different projects. These niggas, we sleeping on the roof. So I'm already like, man, I'm not catching. I'm just like, yo, these are my homies. These are the big homies. Boom, we rocking the move, going around all, all through Brownsville. These niggas stealing fruits and shit, doing mad weirdo. Like I said, at the time, I didn't recognize it. So boom, go, I go to sleep. I'm sleeping on the roof, like on the roof, these niggas. These niggas on the roof. I sleep on the roof. One, I did it for like two days. One morning, I wake up, Super Nintendo gone. Boom. He like, yo, I don't know what happened, da 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 I'm like, shit, all right, cool. I took it as a loss. I wasn't playing, I wasn't plugging in into the rooftop. I wasn't plugging into some shit. These niggas ain't had no joints for me to go. Ain't even like they had bitches to be like, they just like, yo, we over here, we over here, we over here. So boom, that joint happened. We go by Western Beef. I don't know, I don't know what street that's on. I don't know what street. You know the Western Beef right there in the Ville? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We go over here, these, these niggas go through the back part, still some juice. The owner grabbed me, grabbed me to the side, take a picture of me. Boom. Now I'm, now I'm a thief. Now I'm, I feel like I'm a no thief. Running the streets and shit, but it's cool. I'm walking one day, Bob drives a bus, grabbed me up, hopped out on me, grabbed me. Boom. They bring me back, police and shit, missing report. They like, oh, my mom, she's nervous. Me, in my mind, I don't got a taste of the street already. I'm not scared anymore. You feel me? You know, as, as a parent, they always try to tell you, don't run around. It's this at night, it's this at night. I, I was I was open. I realized yo, I can go here, I can go here. When the lights go dark and the street lights on, I'm comfortable. So I guess my mom kind of peeped, peeped that. So now I'm in eighth grade now. I'm cutting school all day now. I ain't giving a fuck. She's scared to hit me now. Cause police don't already got involved. How so long? Was, how long you said you was you was out the house for? I ran away from home for like two weeks. Mm. Probably like probably like yeah, in about two weeks. It wasn't no long shit. You feel me? Like stealing boxes. <laughs> she was weird. It was some real, when I think two about weeks, it, that was some two, fun. two weeks is a long time for a 11 year old kid, though. It, it is, bro. It is. It really is. It really exposed to shit, not being, you feel me? Seeing niggas with guns. That's the first time I shot a desert. Fucking, I shot it in front of the, the top of the roof, fell down the stairs, fucked up my arm. I don't know if my shit was dislocated. You feel me? But what you mean, it, niggas it, that you it, was with or sleeping on the roof, they had a desert? They had a desert. Let me burn it. Let me hit the desert. Boom, ears ringing for about three hours. And how old was the was, dudes you said again? Like, how much older than you? They had to be about 15, kind of. Because they was coming to the to, to my junior. My, my, my school went from kindergarten to uh, eighth grade. So you got chicks in there that's like 13, 12, 13. So they had to be about 16, maybe 17. And where you said they six. was from in the Ville? 
I don't know where it was from. We went to so many projects, bro. I, I couldn't even tell you, to be honest with you. They, every project we went to, they knew niggas. And all of them little niggas was like homeless too? Yeah, yeah. No, two of them was homeless. The other niggas, they was doing their shit. They niggas, I thought the niggas was down with the, uh, the polo shit. Because one nigga used to always come to the school, you feel me, with mad polo on. I even hit the nigga on Instagram, the light skin nigga. I thought he was with the low lights and shit. He was like, nah, it wasn't him, but I don't know. He might have been him, and he was like, yo, I ain't getting myself in that shit. But one nigga that was fresh, he was fucking with the little bitches, he was cool. But the niggas I was with, nah, they was bummed. They was, they was, they was super bummed. I, I, I peeped the whole vibe now, like I said, now. But to me at the time, they, these are big homies. They they bigger, they taller, they go in here, they know people here. What up, what up? And I can hear people saying like, yo, what y'all doing with this kid? You feel me? I can hear it, like, you feel me? I can hear people like, you know what I mean? Because I'm still standoffish. I'm, it's not like I'm out in the hood and I'm just like, Oh, what up, what up? I'm kind of like, eh, you know what I mean? Just kind of, you know, I'm, I'm fucking loving right away from home. You know, I've never been exposed to that. So, boom, when the nigga Bob catches me back, I go back home. My mom, she plead with me, Jerry, don't ever do that again, please. Uh, uh, cool. We go to, um, she buy a house in Canarsie. We move to Canarsie. And I go to Canarsie, boom, it, it was even more open. There's houses, you feel me? Nigga next door to me is a, a, a psych bike big homie. GSC nigga. Before they was GS9, they was GSC. Their big homie was next door. Nigga named Assault. He used to have a boy named uh, 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 uh Cypher. He used to come over there. You feel me? So these are all older, older crip niggas. So I'm seeing them niggas. I'm getting in tune with that. Me and my little niggas, we start on, on that block of Canarsie. I already been in the gang already. So I'm already embraced with the gang life. They banging Haitian Mafia. So I jump right in. Banging Haitian Mafia. I'm cutting school, cutting school, cutting school. Truancy picking you up, truancy picking you up, truancy picking you up over and over. Boom, I get um, I get like too many truancies, they bring me to some like court shit, some like family court. And this is kind of the moment where everything kind of turned left because when they brought me to court and the judge, I remember I remember it clear as day. Because they talking to my mother, they like, and my mother said, she's like, I don't know what to do with him. If y'all can help me, y'all take him. Because he's not listening to me, woo-woo. When she said that, you already know, that's ACS. Once the state get involved, it's a whole different world. That's a whole different world. So now, they take me, I, I go, um, they send me some shit in Atlantic. I do the uh, uh, Spofford, I hit Spofford, hit that shit. So now I'm in the system now. I mean, I'm in I'm in group homes. I'm taking the train back from group homes, going back to Canarsi, I will ride. After a while, I say, yo, fuck that. I'm just stuck with the hood I'm at. I'm fucking with Gowanas. They had the boys twinning them out there, fucking with it. I'm cool, still gang banging. First day inside the group home, a nigga casting over from Yonkers. The nigga's like, yo, if you want to get down, we got some shit called D block. You got to get down or lay down. I hook right off. They ain't scared to swing. Got right off. They jumped the niggas. So now D block. I went from NFO, Haitian Mafia, now D block. So boom, this is bef- this is right around the time when the blood wave was hit. I know you remember that around. Blood started in 93. But around uh, around like 95, 95, 96, that's when everybody's getting red, wearing red. They were scared of niggas getting cut. I was infatuated by the shit. I ain't gonna front. It was, it was like, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, they scared of the bloods. So boom, I start rocking with the blood movie now. That's going bigger and bigger and bigger. All of a sudden, they hit me up one day when I'm in Brooklyn by Atlantic. They said, you going to the Bronx to another group home. So now I'm like, shit, you feel me? I'm a Brooklyn baby. I, ain't, I don't know nothing about uptown. I don't know nothing about all these other boroughs. I know Brooklyn. So no key, like, I mean, I'm about, what's it, I'm about 14, yeah, 14 at the time, 14, 15. I'm kind of nervous. I'm like, shit, I'm, ah. Uh, niggas like, yo, you want to do what you do. You can't run away, nigga, you, you already here. They sent me to the Bronx. I'm on 166 in Morris. I took that shit to like a fish to water. They would love me out there. I'm playing ball. They, they all the Brooklyn nigga, boom. Boom, bloody bleak is my name now. I'm fucking with the homies. So now I'm full throttle. The group home ain't tell you shit. They just telling you, hey, make sure you're back at this time. That's all they telling you. Then they transferred me to a high school named Walton High. Now I'm super gang banging. Because now I feel privileged. I'm like, I'm a Brooklyn nigga in the Bronx. Nigga, we grimy. Niggas know Brooklyn for grimy shit. That's what we know for. You know Harlem for fresh shit. You know Bronx for, for hustling Queens. I ain't never really rock with Queens like that. I ain't never really been my vibe. So now I'm super gang banging. I'm fucking with the shit. Boom. I'm over there. I'm, I'm stabilized. They move me to another group home. This is where this group home they moved me was in Forest and McKinley. Now, that's the first time where I ever seen 
Bloods that were BKCK. I ain't never seen, I never heard no shit like that before. This is the time where I'm hearing Bloods banging on Bloods, cutting Bloods, they cutting cribs. I took like a fish to water. I'm, I'm now I'm, I'm payback. I'm payback to ninety. That's where that 1090 shit came from. Them niggas repping that shit now, these young boys, but that shit started in Forest and McKinley Project in the Bronx. 1090. Payback, Peter Roll, all you bitch ass Crips and Kings. You feel me? That's what that stands for. So niggas is banging on anything. So boom, I'm into that life right now. I got a grip. Now I got a grip. Now I got a uh, tutu llama. Never forget that. I had a deuce deuce llama. Now I'm feeling like the man now. I ain't never busted. I ain't never did no wild shit, but I got it. No matter what, I got it. Boom. I start um, fucking with bitches in school. They like, yo, come to Jackson Ave. Ooh, that's where we at. So, boom, I go to Jackson Ave. They kind of looking at me funny like, who this weird dude? Ooh, ooh. I'm like, boom, I'm fucking with the bitches. One of the niggas from Forest, he see the bitch I'm with one day. He like, yo, hook me up with her. So, we walk across from Forest Projects to Jackson, uh, uh, Jackson St. Mary's. That's on the other side, about eight blocks different. He see some Spanish nigga. He know the nigga, I ain't gonna put the nigga name out there. He like, yeah, that's my homie. They selling dope, ooh, 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 ooh. I'm like, word, okay, okay. So now I'm on Jackson Avenue, I'm fucking with bitches. There's some nigga name out there named uh, uh, Eddie and shit, he moving dope. He got a baby mom, one day I see the baby mom, she like, yo, I just found this right here in the, uh, uh, over here. Now I think about it, she took a nigga stash. She like, yo, I just found it, she had some boulders. Boulders, a stack of boulders. So she give me this shit, she like, you think you could do something? I'm like, yo, I don't know. Them shits was 50 piece now that I know later on I found out I was selling them shits for $10, 20 mm. So boom, I got a taste of that shit. Boom, I got a couple of $300. I'm like, damn, this is kind of this kind of all right right now. So I, I asked the homie, I said, yo, what's up with the Spanish niggas? Tell them niggas, what's up? I go over there to Jackson Ave right now, talking to the Spanish dudes. They looking at me like, yo, niggas don't just randomly come from other other projects like y'all want to hustle. He like, my homie vouched me like, nah, he good, but you know what I mean? You know, Force and McKinley, they, they 1090, they think giving out packs. They on some real territorial. And that's the first time we've ever seen 10, 20 niggas on one strip, everybody eating. You feel me? You know, I, where I was from, the Canarsie, niggas got a little couple of hustling niggas, but not never seen 10, 10 niggas on one block. Yo, 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 I got that. Woo, woo. I said, oh, okay. So I start fucking with the Puerto Rican niggas. They show me love. You feel me? They give me packs, flipping up the packs, getting the packs. When I'm in the hood over there, I can tell the hood niggas in uh, St. Mary's, they kind of wary about me. They looking like, yo, where this thing come from another project out here eating? But little did I know, the niggas I was getting money with, it was hitters. They just burnt the nigga probably like three months before that. So they, they didn't want to really fuck with me because it's like, he with them. So boom, I start thinking, I'm like, all right, cool. I got to find my way in. I go to the basketball court right there on uh, Jackson Ave. And these niggas know me. They know Bleak, they know Jay, they know me. I take my old basketball trophies, I bring them to the court, and I start playing with the little kids. Whoever can make 10 free throws, boom. Whoever can make 10 three-pointers, I give them a trophy. I'm giving my my personal trophies. You feel me? So that was how I slid in. Now the you fucking with me. So I'm hustling, boom, I'm getting money. I'm super big blood. I'm thinking I'm this. I'm ready to eat a food, woo, woo, woo. I done hit Spofford, never hit the island yet. I get one charge. That's when I had the sidekick. I had some dope inside the sidekick case. All these cats with the dope. I hit him with the, nah, that's my shit. I've been struggling. I'm in the group home. I'm over here getting high. Boom, they, they, they rock with it. I get a quick little possession. Boom, they slide me out. I catch another charge again, probably like uh, two weeks later. When I catch that charge, they're like, nah, we know you. We know you. Book me. Now I got a possession with a tent to sell. So now I'm kind of a little wary right now. You feel me? I can't really get caught up in no. I'm still in the group on though. So they they like, yo, you catch the charges in here. You feel me? It's kind of weird. They, they kind of on their last throw with me. I got about two, three niggas on that side of Jackson. I don't turn blood under me. Nah, bro, I, like I said, I thought I was 10 star general. So boom, one of my homies, my little nigga Jimmy, he was under me. I like the nigga Jimmy because Jimmy was about 14. I'm about 16. He had a buck 50 on his face. Clean buck 50, but pretty boy nigga. Smooth hair. And Jimmy took a liking to me. I, I, I turned him blood into me. He got locked up for some shit. He came home, I gave him some Tim's. This is my nigga. And the one thing that always amazed me about Jimmy was that when Jimmy was 14, he kept saying, yo, Bleak, I can't wait till I turn 16 because I want to go to the island and get the nigga that cut me. And he was adamant on that. He was adamant. I mean, the nigga that cut him, 
from that shit over with now, nigga ain't pumpkin from uh 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 Corley. Niggas know who that is. So it's shit done with now though, but kept telling me. And the nigga that cut him was an older nigga. He ran into the nigga on the scooter and got mad at him, ate his food out of the spot. So I was already looking like the nigga that cut him must have been a savage. And he had a clean but I mean a nice buck fit. He just always told me, he always he say, man, bleak, I'm telling you, the moment I go to the island, I'm gonna eat this nigga, I'm gonna kill this nigga. Woo woo woo. Cause pumpkin was locked up at the time for some miscellaneous shit. You feel me? So boom, we running through the hood. Give me that's my homie, he a wild one, but that's why I love the nigga attitude. He he had no no if, ands, or buts going. Whatever anything with me, he moving. So boom, I got some tension with niggas where I'm staying at in uh, Force of McKinley over Jimmy. I'm in the spot one day, chilling, you feel me? I had a uh, dead of some blood nigga off of, off of uh, 380. I'm like, yo, I need that for some shit. The shit ain't had no clip or one bullet in the head. So all I kept seeing to myself is that if I gotta let it go, I got one shot in this. So boom, I got two bricks now. I got the 380 and I got a 2 2 llama. So boom, I'm in the spot chilling. You feel me? Me and Jimmy done had rumbles already. Jimmy, uh, uh, some nigga hit me up like, Jimmy, you just got cut. Or oh, nigga tried to cut him, they cut him his arm. They ain't catch him. So boom. Boom, boom. I'm like, all right, cool. I see, I hit up Jimmy. He like, oh, all right, this is what happened. So now, uh, I know I got tension with niggas in my hood. So now I'm walking back. It's a seven, seven block walk from that hood to that hood. So I'm hustling dope over here, and I'm walking back to the group home and the other projects. So I see one of the niggas that supposedly was there when they got cut. He got a private school uniform on. I'm like, damn. I see him. He walking behind me. He just got off school. I'm like, all right, cool. I'm going to press this nigga. Fuck that. And how old is you is at this time again? I'm 16, 16, 17 about that. All right. So boom, I see the boy. When I see the boy, he walked to the projects. I'm like, yo, what's up? You the man that, that, uh, that uh, I, I with the homie? He got private school uniform on. So I'm thinking, oh, this is an easy win in my head. The boy flips his book bag around and pulls out the, uh, you know when you go to the deli, they got that, the, the big uh, ham and they got that big knife to cut it? The big joint. He pulls one of those joints out. I pull out my little box for the shit. And I'm, I'm not really trying to get close to this shit. This nigga, I got crazy reach. He, he slashed me on, the, on my chest. Boom. Some homies come around. They stop the fight. I go back to uh, Jackson. I tell the homie Jimmy what happened. We go back to the projects. We sat in the projects. We went there about 12 o'clock at night. We sat in the staircase till about 7 in the morning by the nigga apartment. You feel me? And incriminating myself because nothing happened. This shit was done. So we both got two grips and we sitting there by on the nigga floor in the staircase waiting all night, all night. Those and all waiting all night. Mad cigarette buds. Now nah, I think about it. All cigarette buds, DNA. I would have got booked anyway. N the nigga never came out the apartment. The nigga's sister come out. The homie Jimmy like, yo, I'm about to burn her. I'm like, nigga, no. This, it don't work like that. That ain't, that ain't how, how we move. We ain't gonna do shit like that. Boom. Running around, now running around. I get caught with the grip. I get caught with the grip. Now, I already know what it is. Ain't no, there's no juvenile shit. You're going to the right side. This is a pistol. You're going to the right side. So I'm already in blood mode. One thing I always remember was that I remember niggas just say, when I got through the shit in the book, that they was like, yo, if you want to go to a popping building, that's a uh, C95, you got to tell them you do hair on. So, I mean, any nigga that do the island, they know, they know that. If anybody that do hair on, they're going to send you to C95 because they got the methadone clinic. They say all the weed is in there, all the cigarettes, everything's in there. So, I remember when I'm going through the bookers and the CEO lady like, yo, you got any drug habits, woo woo? I'm like, yeah, I smoke weed, cigarettes, and uh, uh, heroin. I said, this shit mad fast. So, she looked at me like, nigga, you was... She was like, excuse me? I said, uh, weed, cigarettes, and uh, heroin. She like, uh, okay, boom. So I go to C95 and shit. So I'm in C95. When I go to C95, I'm in there. I'm in there. I run into the homie. Um, I came in there. I was came in there with some some little jewels on me, some little light shit. I don't know if you ever heard of the nigga Classic. You talking about the kid who got the kid who was in the check scam shit and all of that? Yes, yes, sir. Classic, yeah. yes. Yeah. Classic blood. I was with, he was he was in the bullpen came with me. And Shot 120, I know you heard of Shot 120. Yeah. So them two in there, they in there like, they pressing the whole bullpen. They going crazy. So I'm just kind of posted up. I got a watch and chain on. I make eye contact with Shot 120. So I see him, I see his eyes glisten like, oh, we got one. So he walk over and my mentality is I'm not, I'm not going for it. You know, you know, niggas say, yo, what, what shoes you wear? What size shoes you wear? Your size, pop off. That was the mentality they always trained us already with. So when a nigga come up next to me, he like, yo, what's up? 
you like, yo, you, you, this is the first time locked up. I'm like, you said blood? When I say blood, you like, oh, oh, you blood? His whole attitude changed. You feel me? He got, he got kind of, I mean, I respected that. It wasn't, it wasn't like, oh, I'm still going to try to be a predator. He was like, oh, it's good. We chopped it up, we chopped it up, he introduced me to Classic. I didn't know at the time, Classic used to be crib. And then he turned blood. Sean McTwinnon gave him a whole hood, assassin mill against him. So when I find out later on, I realized how much weight he had because at that time on the island, you couldn't say crib. It was, it was rolling you out. They moving you, they moving you out the way, out the way ASAP, ASAP. They moving you out the way. So I'm talking to the nigga Sean McTwinnon, and like I said, we young niggas, we look up to the older blood niggas. You hear stories about shit. These niggas were like gods to us, you know what I mean? You, you hear about big kids. You hear about, you feel me? You hear about, you know what I mean? Even on China Bridge, you hear about niggas like that. You hear about niggas eating niggas food. So he fucking with me. And he like, yo, um, we got a movement going on. We doing the Miller movement. I, 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 I'm feeling how you came. I'm like, yo, I, I'm going to sleep on it. I'm, I'll let you know. Boom. I realized the nigga was, was more important than I thought when I saw a captain walk to the gate. She called the nigga over, called him by his name. She's like, yo, you good? Uh, uh, everything good, you in the building right now, ain't gonna be no, nothing funny going on, right? He's like, nah, I'm cool, man, da 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 I'm seeing me, I'm watching this. The nigga turn around and come to me, and he's like, yeah, blood, that's how you do it. And it's the first time I ever seen a nigga have a blade in his tongue and slip it out while talking. He took it out right, right after he talked to the cat, he's like, yeah, yeah, that's how you gotta do it, homie, woo woo. So now, as a young nigga, I'm like, damn, this nigga's super blood. You feel me? Like, this nigga got powers and shit. He got the captain making sure he's good. So I, I fell into the, I, I was like, yo, you know what? I'm fucking with the movement. I'm going to holler at you. Ah, 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 ah. Later on, I come to find out a lot of niggas wasn't fucking with him because I heard he tried to take over the shit. I ain't give a fuck. Niggas showed me respect and love. I fucked with him. Boom, he rocking with me. He rocking with me. Seeing how I'm moving on the island. See how I'm moving. He give me all the paper. He like, yo, he going to make me three-star general. Boom. I'm taking it. I'm running with it. Now, I'm, oh, he couldn't tell me shit. Boom. I get released. When I come home, I'm, I'm pushing that movement. I can't go back to selling dope. I can't do that no more. It was a little chick in the hood. I ain't gonna say her name, but she was she was a little slut bucket. Woo -woo, you know what I mean? But she was on me. I'm like, yo, you know what? You know, when I was younger, everybody used to say, yo, your mother worked on 42nd Street. Your mother's on 42nd Street. So, you know, that's where the hookers was at. So I came to her one day. I bought a little bottle of uh, uh, E&J. I had like two blunts. I said, yo, you want to come with me? I'm going to try to make some, some some cool movement shit. She, she didn't care what I said. She was riding with me, whatever. So I drank weed. She was rocking with me. I told her homie Jimmy, come with me down, down near the uh, Manhattan. I don't know nothing about no pimp and shit. I don't know nothing about that. So boom, we take the fucking train. Take the train all the way down to 40 Deuce. I'm over here. Now that I know, like I said, I've been in the pimp game for like 10 years. I'm done now. But when I was in it 10 years strong, uh, I was Mexican pimping the bitch. I was standing right next to her. Like I was babysitting her. And I remember um, we out there, we set her off, and a uh, nigga come out with a Cadillac with a purple mink on. Never forget it, nigga name was Ohio. He starts, he starts uh, talking, to, talking to the bitch. I'm thinking he's trying to get some money, so I'm standing back. So boom, I'm standing back. She, she come up again. I'm like, what are you talking about? She's like, I don't know. You need something about, about money. I say, listen, we're trying to just get some money. You know what I mean? $50, $30, whatever. Woo, woo, woo. The nigga pull back around again, the, uh, the Cadillac, and then his bitches come up with some Ben shit. He walked to me. He like, yo, you, uh, this your bitch? She was standing right there. I, I never called her no bitch. When he said that, she just went with the flow. So I'm sitting here like, whoa, you just took that? Okay. He like, yeah, the bitch out of pocket. Woo, woo, he giving me game. He like, you got to check this bitch, man. He called me to the side. He like, you got you to gotta really let this bitch know. I could have took the bitch. Ah, 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 ah. So I'm with Jimmy and all that. When the nigga walk off, the nigga Jimmy like, yo, let's rob this nigga. From he on some just straight, like, yo, let's get this nigga. This nigga got the shit. I'm like, yo, you know what? I like this pimp and shit. I like the, the way he came. I like the gentleman vibe of it. So I go to the uh, to the chick. I'm like, yo, you can't be doing shit like that. Nigga Jimmy just straight backhand a whoop. Smacks him crazy. So now we over here sharing the bitch technically. You feel me? Boom. That gets going. She ended up fucking with me for like several, several years. So that's neither here nor there. The whole time I'm on the run for that pistol case. You feel me? I never went back after that. You feel me? You know, I got, I got went to the island, got the OR, come back. You feel me? He gave me a, 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 a wobbler. I don't know if they still do that. You know, we do the wobbler, the, the misdemeanor sash felony, but if you do this, you get to the misdemeanor shit. Yeah, but let me ask you right quick. What that, what he said the chick was out of pocket for, like just talking to him too much? 
talking to him because he's a pimp. This is my bitch. Like I said, I'm stomped down. Like any P that's from New York in that area, they know uh, Emperor Caesar. New York Caesar, some niggas call me Young Caesar. Because I was one of the youngest niggas out there. As, as a bitch, this is your claim. She represents you. She has no business talking to nobody but another pimp, but another, excuse me, but a trick and a hoe. Anything else is out of pocket. You feel me? You can you charge bitches for that. You feel me? For him talking to her, he had options where he could have said, you feel me, I'll put the bitch on charge. She got to make me $500 or I can't release the bitch. Or he could have just took the bitch and went to another state. I wouldn't know shit. You feel me? It's a, it's a, it's a lot of slithery shit I learned about the pimp game growing up through that. But he kept it real with me. He's like, yo, I don't want the bitch. But you got to really, really sit tight. He's like, yo, she's a pretty little bitch. She's a pretty, pretty red bone joint. You feel me? He's like, yo, she's a nice joint, man. You got to let her know. So I was infatuated when he's telling me this. You feel me? And then Jimmy just want to smack the bitch. The bitch ears ringing. Ah, he's doing all type of gangbanging shit. But I took, I took a liking to it because now... When I went to 42nd Street before, I just see people outside. Now I'm seeing the eyes. I'm like, this a hoe. Oh, that's a hoe. Oh, that's a pimp right there. So I'm catching on. I'm putting two and two together. So I took it like I'm coming back again, but without him. So boom. When we go back, I take the bitch back the next night without her. The first thing the bitch caught was for $70. She went to like, you know in Manhattan, how they got the little staircases. Like, you know, uh, look, it'd be a house with the little staircase that go down to the little, little park. Mm-hmm. This did a little day with a Mexican for $70. And when the bitch brought me back that seventy dollars to me, that was seven million. You feel me? Because that was the first time I got some money in my pocket. I didn't sell no dope. I ain't rob a nigga. I ain't work for it. I mean, I worked for it with some game. So I took, I took on to that, and I, I ran off to the pimp. I ran full throttle with the pimp and shit. So, boom, I'm with the pimp and shit. I got me a driver right now. I got a, a driver. He drives yellow cab. He's picking me up. Woo woo. I'm going around. I got his driver's license. I'm using that as a. Uh, as ID, the African nigga. He ended up turning Pippa 2 after that. Oh, some shit, this shit contagious. So now I'm driving around, I'm using it, I'm feeling good. I'm like, I ain't gotta worry, as long as I got this license, I'm good. They pulled me, so I'm gonna get back to the island right now. I'm telling you how I got back to the island. They pulled me over, nigga, license suspended. So now I'm trying to tell the cop, just let me go, I'll leave the car. I, 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 I'm trying to tell him, like, boom. He like, oh, now we gotta take you in. And that, it was meant for me to get locked up that day because about 30 minutes before that, I was driving on in the Bronx on Tremont. I was picking bitches down, went through Hunts Point, dropped the bitches down. I'm blasting the music. I had a, a old school Lincoln, long, long, long Lincoln, long joint, pull that shit a banana boat. And I had a bitch in the car with me, a white bitch. I had two bitches, two black bitches and one white bitch. A white bitch had a black eye. Boom, I'm driving Henny, big drinking Henny, big feeling myself. A cop with a station wagon pulls up next to me, big music, I put the music down. He pulls me over. When he pulls me over, he's looking, but I still got the young face, so he's not really thinking like this nigga's really doing that. He like, what's going on? So I, right on the spot, I said, yeah, this is my girlfriend, this is her friend. Uh, she got beat up by her boyfriend, that's why she got the black eye, and that's why I came to get her. Me, I got a habit, when I drive, I don't drive with no shoes on. If I got shoes, I take them off, and I, I drive with slippers. So when I came out the car barefooted or with socks on, he was kind of like, I'm like, yeah, I'm just trying to help her out. I was in bed laying down, I was drinking, I just came to help her. He grabs the bottle of Hennessy, pours the shit out, and says, yo, go the fuck home. My dumb ass goes to 241st of White Plains and put the bitches down on the track. That's how I got locked up. So now I get locked up. I'm going back on the island. Now I'm comfortable now. What so you mean that's how you got locked up? What you mean? Like you went up there and then another cop ran down on you? They, they pulled me over. I was driving up a one-way street. I, like, bro, with the pimple shit, niggas is talking to bitches, rolling the windows down. We screaming out, bitch, I, I, you know what I mean? Emperor Caesar, you mean please believe it, I mean? You feel me? Yeah, we go. Yo, I used to live right there, bro. I used to live on 243rd between White Plains and Barnes. That shit was out of control with prostitutes out there. What year? You might have seen me. I was out there. I had the Jaguar, I had the Cadillac, I had the Lincoln. I was out there. Mount Vernon right there. Yep, it's the borderline of Mount Vernon. I used to live on Barnes, matter of fact. But that shit was out of control over there, man. I had to get from over there, for real, for real. That shit was lovely. I was loving it over there. I ain't gonna lie. I was running, I was running the muck. By that time, I had a little more experience on it. I'm fucking with some older peas. My name's kind of ringing. So when I went over there, I found that track by accident. For my nigga pop shit, he rapping shit. He fuck with uh, um, with uh, with uh, Jim Jones. Fuck with the dips. He a Harlem nigga. You feel me? So I don't want to deviate from that. That's a whole different. Yeah, I, I, I was into that life. So I'm gonna get back to the Rikers Island joint. I get booked. I go to the island. When I went to the island the first time, I was selling dope. I ain't had no shit. I'm you feel me? I'm over here moving and shaking for whatever I can have. This time I went to Ireland, I got bitches now. So my books is full. I got store now. 
I'm doing two for ones, three for ones if you a square. If you the homie, give me one back. If you're a regular 550, two for ones. I'm feeling all right. I got the same little bitch that I turned out at the bigger Jimmy Smack. She's coming to the island. She's bringing me packages of uh, the tops. Uh, uh, the, uh, you know the tops. Mm-hmm. She bringing that shit in. She's passing the shit off to the nigga that uh, I don't want to put it out there just in case they're still doing that play. But I was getting the shit brought in. So I'm comfortable. I'm feeling myself. I'm, I'm, I got a nigga that clean my dishes. After I eat, give the nigga a rollie. Yeah, I'm, I'm rolling it though. I'm feeling, I'm feeling good. Yeah, I'm thinking I'm fucking up. Uh, it's a nigga from America against Frank Lucas. I'm feeling good right now. So I'm comfortable and shit in the island. And uh, yeah, not to DV, I'm going to get back to uh, the crazy story, but I'm going to tell you one quick shit that happened on the island. At this time, uh, you know, the captains walk around 10 o'clock every night. Mm-hmm. So boom, I'm in the cell side at the time. Captain Captain never walked this night. I'm like, damn, I got a, uh, I got a little joint. I got weed in there now. I'm like, shit, he ain't never come through. I'm like, I'll be good. I'm rolling up the tissue paper, put deodorant on it, light that up as an incense. I'm like, all right, cool. I'll wait, 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 1030. Never happened, boo. So I, I light up the smoke. Nigga, we locked down a race. The niggas in the cell like, yo, 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 please, yo, you making that eyes. I think it's chill. We good. I'm smoking. Whole tear lit up. I hear the gate open. Captain walking. Boom. Captain walking. I'm ready to piss in my pants. So now what I do is that I, I, I hear him because I'm all the way. I done booked nigga for the cell. So I got the cell all the way in the back and you're going up the theater. So while the, while the um, captain getting ready to walk down light and mad uh, deodorant and shit, I grab a, a, a Muslim carpet, I put the shit on the floor, and I get down like I'm praying. You feel me? I lay down like I'm praying. I, I see the flashlight go by me, and it stop like you smell it. I know you smell it. You know what? You don't smell it. Put the flashlight, I'm, I'm faking like I'm praying, and I see the flashlight going over my head. Boom, 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 we leave. Next morning, by 6, 7 in the morning, waterfall. You know, waterfall, the search come in. My strategy with the waterfall, because I had a lot of store, I fucked my room up. I fucked my room. I fucked my whole cell up. I'm, I'm throwing shit around. I'm shit messy. Because you know, the sale, that's what they're coming to do anyway. So I got this shit messy. I got couches in the rice bag, cracking a little bit, couches of weed, cigarettes, everything, boom, boom. I made it through that search. I'm good. So now I'm comfortable. Some nigga come in the house. This nigga, oh, this is where the shit right here. This is where the shit get critical. This nigga about... 350, big, big nigga, about six something, older nigga, but he Haitian. He come in the house, niggas is telling me, yo, he's the man that used to have the cigarettes and shit. So now I'm like, damn, he's gonna try to step on my toes. They're like, nah, the homies whooped him out already. Shot 120, my big homie. He already ran him out. I guess they was extorting him. So now I'm like, all right, cool. In my mind, I know that means that he can't live with me. You feel me? But I'm comfortable, you feel I'm comfortable. And he not coming on no smoke shit. He come to me one day, he Haitian. So he talking to me in Creole, we vibing. And he like, yo, you know, I had some tension with your homies in the other unit. I'm like, yeah, man, that ain't about shit. Ooh, ooh, ooh. He like, yo, I used to be the man with the, with the project. Like, I know he said, he told me he had a CO bitch bringing him shit. He's like, yo, the homies did me some dirty. I'm like, bro, that's nothing. You good with me, we ain't on that. So I'm chilling, living life. And nigga come to me about two weeks later after he in the unit with me. He like, yo, you think I can get a couple, uh, couple, uh, a couple cigarettes, whatever? So at the time, I'm thinking he just wants some shit to smoke. I get a nigga two fingers. When I give it to him, I see his face kind of like, he look at me kind of awkward like, like, like this. I'm like, yeah, that's what I got you. Like, you ain't got no shit, you ain't got no more. I'm like, what you mean, bro? I'm like, yeah, that shit kind of weird, what you like? You know what I mean? It's kind of awkward. He like, no, I'm good. I'm gonna find out, he went to go flip that. Through my background on the nigga, he killed his wife. He used to be a cop in Chicago. He moved out here to New York and killed his wife. So that's why he was, that's the charge he was fighting at the time. So now I'm chilling, boom, he in the unit, you know what I mean? He look like he uncomfortable, but he ain't saying shit to me. I got a couple of doges around. I got a couple of niggas I can send on miss, missions and shit. So I'm comfortable. So now, Shine them 120, classic, uh, um, disco, uh, uh, um, what's the homie name? Uh, uh, FBI, Blink Loud, all these niggas are next door. Admin Sec, they right next door. So I'm just in my head, like, we ain't never gonna run into each other. They ain't gonna never know he in my house. So you feel me? Even though I was floored for that, personally, let me keep it real with you lads, I'm not trying to tussle with this nigga. I was probably about 175, 180. This nigga was three and change muscle and shit. I'm not trying to get choked out. This nigga killed his wife. He's going to kill me on these cells. So I'm trying to keep it at peace. And if it got to, you feel me? I'm going to try to make a movie on him and have him rolled up. I'm not trying to go blow for blow with this nigga. This nigga cause I, I ain't on that. I'm comfortable. I'm living good. You feel me? Niggas might say some bitch shit. I don't think it was a bitch. I think it was playing the smart. You feel me? So now he in the house. We 
randomly they fuck up one day they let admin sig out when we going out out, out the um out the yard they coming in we going out so now so now we walking by you know how they got the lines we got two two units walking by each other right mm-hmm. so shot one twin he in the front i'm in the front i'm in the front they pass me they going down they see oh boy they pop right off on them in the hallway boom 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 boom, boom. But 20 minutes later, when I get to the unit, I get a kite still under my door, and then he gets a kite to me. He's like, yo, the boy gotta go. He gotta go ASAP. I'm like, all right. Who that? You talking about the dude that killed his wife? Yeah, he like, he can't live here. He's a plate. You know what I mean? I'm I'm three star general for this shit. He's a plate. One thing I can say about Shaw 120, and and, and right now I think about it, it was crazy, but the nigga told me straight up when he gave me my papers on my oaf shit, he said, yo, blood, if you don't know your oaf shit, I'll personally eat your food. Right in, my, right in front of me and told me that. He told me, and I mean, I didn't take it as no pussy, this shit. I took it as, nigga, this for real. We doing this shit like this, how we move it. All right, cool. So I knew that when it came to, to, to stipulations on this shit, if you going, you rang with this red, and you move it, you move it. So now I get back to the unit, I got the kites under the door, the homie's like, yo, boom. I got a couple of those niggas like, yo, what you gonna do? I'm like, yo, nigga gotta leave, bro. I can't, this ain't gonna, this ain't gonna work like this. So now I go on myself. I pull out my, I pull out my little bangy shit. I had little, little, little gem star shit. I had the shit glued on, taped up. And this is the moment where I realized I could have got killed. Nigga could have murdered me easily, and I didn't know. Boom! I got the blade shit. I put the shit in my cell. I got a single cell. I put the shit on my shelf, and I'm in the room like you saw me writing my, uh, my little letter shit, getting my shit together. Boom, boom, boom. He walked to the cell. He come in the cell. He said, he walked in. He said, yo, bro, yo, I already know shit with the homies. Now, he, when he talking to me, he look on the side and he see the bangle on the table. He got me straight up if he wants to. Like I said, the cells ain't that big. He can overpower me, he rush me. He can go ham on me. Kick back toe, he can go crazy. Connect toe on my face, anything. Slip my throat, whatever. He look at it and he look at me and he go, oh, word is like that? I'm like, bro, you know you can't stay here. You know what I mean? He look at me again, he look at the bangle. I'm like, this ain't about to grab it. He, he spent off. When he spent off, I'm like, all right. It's a whole different ball game now. Boom, I wrapped the shit up, tied the shit up, boom, put the shit in my front, my front pants, wrapped the shit up in my, in my boxes. I'm going to the phone. I'm going to call my bitch, let her know I'm about to go to the hole. If anything, woo woo, let her know what's going on, give her the prelude. So now I get on the phone, talking on the phone. The nigga cell is right by the phone. He in the front cell. I walk by his cell, his shit packed up. So in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, he just gonna do a roll up move. Ah, hell now. When I get on the phone, I'm talking, he walk by. And he tried to sneak me. When he tried to sneak me, he missed and hit the wall. I'm on the phone. Boom. We getting down. The only advantage that I had, and I think about it now, was the fact that he was so wide that he's swinging, but I'm so small and compact, I'm in between. So I'm swinging straight forward. So if I'm swinging him six times, it's taking him two, three times. So it's six, three, you know what I mean? So it looks like I'm doing all right. You feel me? Mm-hmm. I guess at some point, the nigga realized, like, you feel me? I can't get to no banger right now, but we... we we in the middle of the tussle. I'm not reaching the shit. This nigga trying to overpower me. At some point, I guess he realized I'm not going to have blow for blow with this nigga. He grabbed me straight up from the, from the chest, from the shirt, picked me up and slammed me. When he slammed me, I guess he tried to like get over me. I guess the homie jumped in like, but them niggas that was in there, now I realized they was on some bitch niggas. They didn't pop off. They was on some trying to stop the fight. Like, yo, chill, chill, chill. See yo coming in. Oh, get the pin. She come out with the mace. Boom, she hit the mace up. I, I, I got the bang, I passed it to the homie. And uh, you feel me? I mean, we went to the hole, and they kept telling me in the hole, he's like, I'm gonna kill you. When I see you, I'm gonna kill you. I get to the hole, so I'm feeling like the man now, I put a plate. You know what I mean? So that's kind of where that that, that that episode went. Uh, the Rikers, man, you feel me? And uh, after that, I was kind of out of staple right there. I was I was good, I took my plate, I handled my business. You feel me? I ain't eat the nigga, eat the nigga food, because I couldn't get to it. But if I had a chance to, I damn sure would have made a movie on it. Because I was prepared to go to the whole. My shit was packed up. I wrote letters out. I did my play. So, yeah, that was the crazy wild shit, man. You know what I mean? And uh, they, had, they had some real stand-up niggas here that was doing this shit. When niggas talk about shit like niggas like Disco, he was he was having his way on the island. You feel me? Nigga Bling Blau, he was having his way on the island. You feel me? Me and Bling Blau went to the hole before. You feel me? I seen a nigga grab a, a police bitch titty. And the bitch turned around. And I, I turned blue in the face like. And the bitch turned around and looked at him and said, you better watch yourself, and walked out. I said, oh, yeah, niggas having their way in it. You feel me? So, yeah, that was just one episode, though, man. But, yeah, bro, that's kind of 
kind of how that shit went though, man. I just want to put light on it. And I'm not promoting no street shit right now. I live on the golf course in Florida right now. I'm driving the vans. I'm working. I'm good right now. I ain't really into no thing. I still fuck with the homies. You feel me? I ain't no gang banger. You know what I mean? I still support my members. You feel me? But, uh, you know what I mean? I'm worried about, you know what I mean? Getting better. I'm doing good right now. Hey, yo, after this feature story, make sure you check the short story by the bro books for my projects. You heard I'm attaching it to the end of this story. Make sure y'all don't miss that. That's a fact. Yeah, man. LAZ, man. Now, I mean, I'm here with the big bro. You already know. We gonna tear that Marcy memoirs up. I can't wait, bro. You heard? That you ain't heard of. Marcy, Marcy <laughs> history that y'all ain't ready for. Coming soon. Hey, yo, make sure y'all go stream that Marcy made the documentary from De Haven on Prime Video and Tubi. You heard? Leave a comment. Give us some feedback. Let us know how you feeling about that. You're Z-Man Suicide Polo with the ski man running around the hood like he-man. Vaughn P in the building, repping that DC. DC, uptown, northwest. Gen Pop, we in the building. This is the first, this is the first internet. This is before the internet and before YouTube stories and before jail stories on YouTube. Word. This is what it was, baby. I was on it hard, so I had to have Shout out to my man, D. Shout out to my man, D, from DC. He was my supplier. This is what we using to decorate the podcast set. Word. You heard? So get ready for... Get ready for the most fire podcast set you ever saw in your life. That's a fact. So he stand over me. He like, where the chain at? I'm like, yo, bro, I ain't got it. I gave it to the other homies up there. And he's like, what? The nigga pistol with me in the back of the head. When the nigga do that, right? I do the fake, uh, uh, like knockout shit. You know the movie shit, nigga hit a nigga. So I laid out flat and I laid out and I don't move. The nigga go, I swear to God, bro, I swear on my life, T.O. was dead. A nigga go, Bitch ass nigga, you ain't knocked out. I shoot you in the back of your head. I go, aye, aye, chill, chill. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, uh, this was a situation, man, um, rocking with, uh, Forrest and McKinley, man, that's, uh, that's a different time zone, especially coming from Brooklyn, well, my side of Brooklyn, I can say, I'm from, I'm from the floors of Canarsie, that's where I was living at, Crown Heights, so we, it's a lot of houses over there, so we wasn't really, like, into the projects, when I went to the Bronx, it was kind of a different world, you know, 166 and Morris, I mean, that was the first time I ever actually broke night, as far as the niggas just sitting outside, just, smoking and drinking. You told me it was a lot of love over there on 166 and Morris. You know, you got some college niggas, Six Wild. That's the first time I seen a nigga actually back out on a nigga and try to light him up right there over some random, you feel me? Nigga hit a nigga with the bicycle. Nigga got mad and tried to air him out. Never seen no shit like that, like up close. So that, that, that was a different world. But for the most part, I mean, the whole 167 Grand Conference was cool. You know what I mean? I was blood, it was real blood orientated. Had a lot of Jamaicans, so it was good. When I got moved and I moved into McKinley, I was on, a, I want to say, 163rd in Tenton. It's right there. It's the building right across you from McKinley Projects. And uh, Jane Adams' school is right there. So that that's already a, a, a little mixture of bad shit. You got a projects and directly across the street. I'm not talking like down the block or maybe. I mean, like, you can see, if you look out from the front of the school, it's the project, project park. That's the park right there. They booked me for multiple attempts. So... You gotta put it on like it's probably early 2000s. You feel me? At that time, Pele, these niggas watching Pele Jean Parasukos. You feel me? Mecca. You know what I mean? South Pole, you was still kind of bumming with the South Pole. You know that like, in middle school, I had the jacket. South Pole wasn't in. Sean John was making a cool rock away. So at the time, uh, a nigga was rocking the fit like uh, it was the, uh, the, the Pele jeans. And I think I had a yellow Mecca shirt and I had the beef and brocks. Not the beef and brocks, um, uh, mac and cheese, the yellow joints. You know the yellow joints. Mm -hmm. But I, uh, I went to the custom shop on some just young shit. I'm in high school at the time, and I got the the brim, the little strip that go around. I got that shit spray painted uh, white, so it, it pop out more. You just see the mac and cheese, and it was white. So I'm over here just uh, kind of just you know what I mean. I'm rocking the shit, to put the shit into interlude. At the time, I'm I'm living in uh, McKinley and Forest. You feel me? It's a different world. Like I said, it's the projects. I ain't never really liked the projects as much. Only main for the fact that I ran away from home at 10, 11. So 
I was I was basically in the project always. I saw shit that that made me uncomfortable. I felt like when you're in the project always, shit can happen from any end. Nigga from upstairs, downstairs, this floor. I felt real vulnerable, so I hated the project project always. So we happened to be in a they transferred me to the group home. I was in the group home, and that it, it's kind of a weird shit if you think about it. The system, the way that the system works, it doesn't benefit the youth. Because if you're telling me uh, I'm a troubled kid running away, I'm, I'm a um, delinquent, what they call this shit, truancy, I'm not going to school, you put me in a group home, you're trying to kind of better the, a teenage, young teenage boy, why would you put me directly across the street from a project, a housing development? You know what I mean? Like, like all the group homes, I already knew, like, all the group homes was always next to projects. So you try to take one kid and say, all right, the way you're living isn't, isn't proper, isn't, isn't the way that society deems of it. But you put us next to the hood where you come outside, you see crackheads, niggas is hustling. Like it, it was it was blatant. So when they had the had the spot over there, next door from the group home, I mean directly next door was the was the uh the crack house. Like anybody that know uh, uh, uh McKinley Pease, they know the building over there. I'm sure they probably been gone. That's just, just 20 years ago, 15 years ago. I mean, I mean, but Carmen, there was a crack house right next door, all the blood homies is over there. So I'm supposed to sit here and try to uh, better myself, you feel me? But right next door is, is a main crack house. When I say main, I, I don't want to be a chill. Like niggas chilling there smoking, they, they bagging up. It was a real trap house directly next door. So it even got to the point where uh, 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 he had uh, the homie, uh, I mean, the homie, I ain't got no, no hard feelings for the homie, you feel me? The homie Goody, he was supposed to be three-star general. You feel me? He out there. I mean, these niggas running the hood. Like I said, it's Austin McKinley with some real, it was some real solid niggas out there. You got, you got, uh, uh, you got Goody, you got Red, you had Macho, you had, uh, 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 the homie, um, uh, the homie, what's the homie name? Uh, M. Dot. Yeah, yeah, you had, you had some real reptables that was out there. You had the homie Bless. These niggas was really strong holding the shit. I'm a young teenager. I'm still 13, 14, 15, 15 at the time. So I'm still watching the joint. And I remember I'm out there, I'm over here like I'm blood. The homie, uh, Goody, he out there, he drunk and shit. I mean, these niggas are older than me, way older than me. So the boy Goody, so you know what I mean? Anybody that know how, how it goes in any kind of project stronghold, there, there's always the influences. There's always the big homies. There's always the niggas that, that you feel me, that had to work. Whether or not they was working with somebody else, you ain't know, but those were the niggas that had to work, they was giving it out. So those were the main niggas, and he was one of the main niggas. You feel me? Three-star general. Niggas was higher ranked. You feel me? Like really, really flooding the hood with some shit. Like I said, that was the first time I was exposed to seeing so many niggas on one area all hustling. Like, oh, uh, like, I, in my mind, I didn't understand how anybody ate. But again, it goes hierarchy. You can tell the, the, the older homies, hell it out, timmed up. Then you got the homies right under that. They was kind of not mean. Maybe had some, some, some cool jeans on. Maybe had some fresh jeans. And then you had the slack. You know what I mean? So you can always tell the hierarchy with any kind of gang hood culture so i remember one day the nigga uh the nigga said some shit like uh we outside in front of the building i mind you i'm in the group home shit that's on the second floor next door to me is a fucking crack house there's a lady upstairs they used to always be snitching calling the cops it's not my business you feel me i took a liking and i took a, a, a love it to jackson ab 152 st mary's project that was that was kind of where my stomping ground was so i left that project even though i lived there i fuck with niggas there but i went and ate on the other side because the other side, I mean, they, they wasn't cutthroat. You know what I mean? But man knows about Forrest and McKinley, they cutthroat. The niggas will take your head off, man. Like, like the niggas will do some wild shit. And one of my homies from the group home, you feel me? Uh, 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 the homie did his time already, you feel me? Uh, from Big Stu's Brent. I ain't gonna put the homie name out there. They know who he is. Them niggas is out there. He, he fell in love with the hood. He started getting attached to this shit to the point where, I guess these niggas was from Cali. And they wasn't from out here. They drove through the hood and it was just like, yo, cuz, where the weed at? You feel me? I'm outside in front of the building. You feel me? So I guess they were seeing somebody else from up the block and I'm watching this. I'm like, this nothing good come out here. The homies tell them niggas, yo, go in the building and we got the bud for you. I see the play going on. The homie go with them. I'm like, nah, I'm gone. I, I already know how this is about to go there. I'm out of here. So I come to find out this shit hit the newspapers and everything. I guess they went in the building. Them niggas up, went in there and tried to get the bud. Almost eight these niggas live, buck fifties all around. I mean, tic tac toe, wild, crazy joint, out of pocket, out of zone. So that that hood was already dirty. So I remember the boy Goody, we outside chilling again, out of my zone. I don't like that area. I know it's 1090. I know it's, it's BKCK, but I'm, I live over there. Sometimes I don't want to go to Jackson. I'm chilling. The boy outside drunk. He like yo blood. 
Hey, yo, that lady that's in your building, she be snitching, right? I'm like, bro, I don't, I don't know nothing about that. She's like, yeah, 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 I, I heard she be snitching. Uh, 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 she, she right over there. Go, go, go get off on her. <laughs> now I'm thinking about it. Now I'm laughing about it. But at the time, in my head, I'm thinking, what? Like, first of all, nigga, y'all niggas is gangbangers in the projects. I'm in a, 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 a consolidated uh, United States facility at the moment. I'm not sitting here assaulting no lady and nef- definitely not on behalf of you. That's what I'm thinking at the time. Like, nah. So the nigga like, yo, uh, yo, what you mean? Ah, ah, ah. Yo, get off of her. Woo, woo. So the nigga like, nah, blood. Like, nigga, I'm cool too. I'm, I'm, I'm real right too. Like, I, I got status in my shit too. I'm not jumping out the window. Boom, we get down the middle of the street. Some other big homies. This nigga's about 10, 10 years older than me. They jump. Goody red. They know who they is. I respect y'all niggas that did y'all shit. I would do the same shit too. Walk me out, boom, from the building. I get up, wipe my face. I sit right in the same building. Everybody outside. I sat outside. You feel me? Like, like I'm good. Like, I'm not with those. Like, I'm cool. I'm good. If niggas want to give me the one on, I'm cool. Other than that, I'm sitting right here. So I didn't know if the niggas thought I was going to run inside and uh, kind of get low on some of that. The little group home blood. I mean, he tripping. Maybe he seen this. Like, oh, I right, he, he cool. He held his own. Now, when I think about it, I probably look stupid as hell because the building is across from the project and it's a it's a, a spotlight on it. So I'm sitting here in the spotlight looking dumb as hell, like like the like in the fucking uh like in the zoo display case probably. You know when you go by the zoo, they got the wild animal hmm. and a nigga looking like I probably look crazy, but I mean like I said, I held my own. So boom, I'm still I'm comfortable in there. Niggas is really fucking with me. I end up seeing the homie one more time after that, and uh I had a uh. Uh, fucking broken 380s. I mean, it wasn't broken, but I had no clip of one in the head. And uh, I was walking in the building. He was outside. He like, it was good, blood. Ah, ah, ah. And I had to sit in my backpack. And I remember when I walked in, the door closed. I heard the nigga say, yeah, yeah, that's the blood. That we, had, we had to get out. He good, though, but we, we had to speak about You should have seen it. And I just kept thinking in my head, like, damn, I got the, I got this shit right now. And I went in the building, so he, they think they, they chilling, talking. I'm like, I could have just backed up, double the door, and domed the nigga. It really flashed in my head. Because I was just like, I was like, I didn't want to feel belittled, but I just had to play the consequences like over time. I'm like, I live here. It's here. Like, like it, nothing good would happen. But I just kept thinking, like, he don't realize that him making that joke, if I was another individual, not knowing that I heard him, it could have been the, the finisher. I mean, it really could have been an Undertaker tombstone shit. So I ain't really stressed on that. So I'm chilling now. I'm going to uh, school in Walton. This is where I got to fit on the um, the Tim's on the, uh, the Mecca. Boom, with the, the, the Pelly joint. And I don't know if you remember the, uh, the Vasquez. You, you fuck with the Vasquez? What you mean, the boots? Yeah. Yeah, nah, that was... <laughs> the Vasquez <laughs> was a little too... They was a little too uptown for me, but I, I remember <laughs> what you're talking about, though. I ain't never heard of this shit. I but never now I remember, them. now I know niggas, real niggas in the Bronx and shit was rocking them shits. I was like, I remember. With, I love them shits. I love them shits, bro. Them going to basketball joint, I love them. I had the beef and Brock uh, uh, basketball joint. I was loving them shits. Them shits was niggas, lit for me. They niggas, was. Niggas Bronxed you out. You came they up there, niggas out. Bronxed That's you out. Nigga had the basketball on. You know it. Them shits was you know, Bronx. Even them to shits. the point when I went back home to Brooklyn, a lot of the homies are like, oh, the uh, uptown homie came back home to us. Everybody kept saying the uptown homie. Like, <laughs> I, like I said, niggas, first of all, niggas wasn't wearing Pele's in Brooklyn. You feel me? It, it, it was it was like, a few niggas wearing Pele's in Brooklyn. It was all, but it was, older, but it, it, was like it was very niggas. popular in the Bronx more than it was prop popular in Brooklyn. Definitely. I think the AVs was more popular in Brooklyn. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's been it's been niggas money getting niggas who Monday, you know right. they they Monday, in Monday. Brooklyn they had some Pele's, but yeah, niggas was rocking AVs more than they was rocking Pele's. I mean, and if you seen a nigga with a Pele on in Brooklyn, he was fresh. It wasn't like niggas know you always see the bum nigga with a fresh jacket, he'd be bummed out. But if niggas in Brooklyn with the Pele, they was they was low key fresh. You put it together, so I I, I took on to that. Like I, I was loving that Pele shit. I was loving the Paris suit. I was loving that look. I was like in the Wazam leathers. The Hudson eight ball leather, I had one of those joints. You feel me? I, I was loving that look. <laughs> so boom, and uh, so I was like I said, so this is the transition for me going to the group home from Brooklyn to the Bronx. I used to always get fresh to come down. You feel me? My main reason why I stopped, uh, uh not stopped, but why I, I, I did less frequent trips from the Bronx to, to the to uh, Brooklyn was one, it's like two and a half hours. So that's already half the day. You feel me? So I'm traveling now. I got to chill, though. Then I got to take another ride back. 
You feel me? The main issue that happened was one night I was on the L train. I'm sitting on the L train, boom, it's a long ride, so I'm riding that shit back. A nigga dozed off, like he regularly do. A nigga happened to doze off. I'm chilling with the homies, drinking, smoking. I gotta go back home. I gotta go back to the blue wall. I'm an A wall if I don't. That's a whole different problem. So, boom, I'm on the train, dozing off. And I don't know what it was. It had to be a sixth sense, some kind of energy. You feel me? Like I'm more spiritual than religious. Something said, open my eyes. When I open my eyes, some African dude, I say African because he look African, but he could be just a regular black dude. He got my chain, and my chain is at the level of my nose, and I can see him inching over, like inching it off my neck. You feel me? And my eyes opened at the last second, and it startled me because I like the shimmer on my chain was so close to, like, to my eyes. Wait, like, what, what, the fuck? what stop and was this? Like, what stop was this on the L? Bro, this is a. Uh... Bro, I, I, I'll be lying. I don't want to even fabricate it. I don't because I don't remember. I, I might. I want to say it was near Broadway Junction, but I'm not sure. All right, so he was you trying to me? take the chain off. He trying to he was sliding it off little by little. But the last, last time I opened my eyes, and it, like it startled me. Like the chain startled me before the nigga because it was so. He was like, I guess he was inching it off, and my eyes opened. <laughs> <laughs> oh, some real pink panther shit, like real creepy, sneaky shit. And our eyes opened, and I was like, oh shit. And I, I jumped up, the nigga let go. I thought he, I mean, if I was dead, I would have took my whole neck with him to keep it real. If I was I'm halfway there, I'm taking the whole neck. But he startled, he jumped, he let it go and ran off the train. I got up, he got off the train, but then I'm like, yo, it's fucking two in the morning, whatever. I look like chasing this nigga. I've still got my piece, and I gotta wait for the next hour on the train. Another nigga gonna book me. I'm sitting there looking like, I mean, I'm looking like fresh meat. Wherever, if the nigga was bold enough to do that, I would've got got. So boom, I get back on the train. I ride home, I, I mean, from then on, I say, you know what? I ain't never, you know what I mean? I ain't doing no late night trip shit. If I go to the hood, I'm going daytime, I'm home early than that. Like, nigga had me slipping. I mean, he had me slipping. So that's the main reason why I kind of just adapted more to, to Uptown, you feel me? Like, Harlem, I used to uh, go to Harlem, I used to hustle on 125th in St. Nick. I mean, with the homie uh, Lean Brill, Charlie Brown, uh, uh, P. Shine, the homie Twins, I bless you, Dad. You feel me? I was, I was out there selling cigarettes. You know what I mean? I, that's what I did the cigarette hustle, doing the Lucy's. You feel me? Buying it from the African, buying the cartons, and going to flip. You know what I mean? It, it, was, it, it was more just socializing. You know what I mean? Niggas get fresh, put your Sunday's best on, you feel me? And go sell 50 cent cigarettes on the corner. It, it was odd, but it was commodity. You feel me? It was good. It was socializing. You know what I mean? So that, that 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 just got me thrilled with the Harlem shit. All them bitches was different. All them bitches, you know what I mean? They was, they was acting like they shit don't stink. So they gotta come correct. You feel me? They gotta come correct at these Harlem bitches. Like, that bamboo earrings is not for less than nobody. So I really, I fell in love with the Harlem culture. So boom, in the Bronx, loving the BX shit, you know what I mean? 166 Morris, fucking 152 in Jackson. I even fuck with Boston Road a little bit. 241st, I rock it over there. I lived on 180, uh, 180, Third, not when they second and Crescent, I was out of bounds. I had no business over there. Cause that was in the prime time of the whole DDP Patia blood war. We had a little blood war going with them. And I was living in their hood. You know what I mean? I was getting money and all that. You feel me? I done had uh, three hoes coming out there. Imagine having three hoes going in the middle of one of uh, 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 second and Crescent in the hood coming out. A lot of niggas died on that block. You feel me? And I remember one day I was walking home and a group of Spanish niggas, uh, going like, yo, yo, hey, yo, uh, are you bleak? Uh, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, what's up? He's like, oh, oh, nah, oh, no, and I was, I was just checking, I thought that was you. Okay, cool, nigga, spin off. So I was never ever comfortable with that. I got up out of there, I mean, when I when I had the first chance to get some good bread. So boom, now I'm in Walton, Walton High School, that's in the Bronx, again, Kingsbridge, you feel me? Never been exposed to that many Spanish shit, so it became a, a race war, you feel me? It was really more of a race war. You have Spanish bloods, but really it became a Spanish against black, you feel me? Crip niggas, we watched them crip niggas out. At that time, that was when the, the blood peaked, early 2000, we watched them crip niggas out. So I'm chilling there, I'm in the school, I'm feeling comfortable, niggas is fresh. Even to the point where I had a hoodie, I had a hoodie, a Moschimo hoodie, and I got the uh, the letters, it was some young, young dumb shit, high school shit. On my right sleeve, I had blink. On the other sleeve, I had focus. I don't even know why I put focus, I just put something on. And on the back of the hoodie, I had dip set. Again, young nigga shit, all right? I mean, niggas gonna chew me up for that. But the reason I said dip set, because we was cutting school, and we was in the hallway, so every time we saw security, it was like, oh, yo, we got a dip set. So that became the shit, so I was a hallway runner. Anybody that know me, they know bleak, I was a hallway runner. I'm in the hallways more than anything. Figured out the way to make the fake up passes. 
So I had to pass every day of the week. You feel me? Even to the point where if I went to class finally and they did attendance, the teacher would say my name. Niggas in the class would be like, oh, shit, that's your name, blood? Oh, please, that's your name? Like, yo, bro, don't do that. Like, niggas didn't even know that's how much I was in the hallway. It was such a rarity to see me in class. So I'm in there. New chick coming to school. Boom. Uh, uh, I got the, uh, the, um, this is the day I got the, uh, the, 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 the fiddle. I'm trying to tell you how I got booked for the tips. So new chick coming to school, chick little Doreen, fresh little pretty joint. I'm on it. Nice little pretty joint. Bag the joint. Rock me the joint. The joint live over there by like 174 Katona. Out of bounds again. By the uh, Bronx Zoo. So boom. Still, I'm in early teens. This is the first time I actually went to a chick's house and she had her parents there and we were allowed to, to like be alone with the door closed. I ain't never seen no shit like that. Keep it real with you. I don't fuck with joints moving. I'm shaking. But to be at a house with a joint... As a teenage boy with a female and a mom is, is like closed the door and like doing her own thing, it blew my mind. So, I mean, I took advantage of it. I'm chilling. I mean, I'm knocking shit down. And I remember the night I had to sit on. I'm feeling really good. I had the chain on my neck. Fuck with the joint. I got to take the bus back from Katona back to, uh, to uh, Forest McKinley. So it's about 10 o'clock at night. I'm leaving. I get back. Boom. I get back to the hood. I'm walking down to uh, Prospect. Right there, uh, 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 right there by um, White, what's that, White Plains, Westchester. I'm walking down back. My building's across the street from the project. I'm good. I just knock sitting down. I've been trying to knock down. Shit is feeling good. Go home and go relax. I'm feeling all right. I'm like, all right, shit. I walk by the project park. The park's right there. Uh, uh, right, by the, right across the street from the school. My building's right across from it. I see the homie T.O. in the park. I mean, like I said, I've been accustomed to the park. Right? Like, what up? He's like, yo, bro, who can play ball? When I walk by, you know how it's always niggas standing in front of the park? And sometimes you just don't, don't you're not noticing them. You just know it's always niggas there. And mm-hmm. you don't really, like, check out the faces. You just keep it moving to where you're going. Mm-hmm. So, boom, I see the niggas. I didn't figure out no faces yet. I'm just seeing niggas. I, I'm looking. All right, none of my business. It's 100,000 niggas that here hustle. I ain't hustling. So who the fuck am I to worry about who's selling dope around here? I walk by them niggas. Boom, I'm getting to the park, getting to the park. I see the other homie, uh, I see the homie T.O. I see the other homie saying, you gotta get some butt. I got the chain on my neck. Now, at the time, I wanna kinda really make this picture real vivid. Nigga had jean shorts on. I mean, I, it was cool at the time. You know the jeans, niggas rocking jean shorts. I know you had a pair of lads, don't do that. Niggas had the jean shorts. <laughs> I, I had the jeans. I ain't shirt. never really. I don't think I have ha, ever had a pair of jeans. So, no, I, I might have. Maybe back in the days. I might have, nigga. I don't know about nowadays, though, man. My nowadays, bro. I'm talking about, nigga. I'm talking about early 2000s. You a dirtbag for that? Like, nigga, nigga lasted. Nah, I don't, I don't know about those. I had but the I, hot, had the, I had the hot. I had the hot full length joints on in the summer, but shit. Yeah, so you said you had the jean shorts on, what happened? The jean shorts, but they got the little small cargo pocket on the side. You feel me? So I got my chain on, I got the shirt on. So boom, the homie like he gonna the homie come pull, pull up, he like yo, I'm about to get some blood. I'm like, oh I right, shit, cool. I had like 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 fifty dollars in my pocket, I get a nigga a, a dub. I'm like, yo, grab me a dub, you gonna go smoke. You know what I mean? I took my chain off real specifically before I got, I got on the basketball court and I put it on the side pocket in the little cargo pocket. I don't know why. Usually I might have put it in my regular pocket, but I knew the cargo pocket was small and compressed. So boom, I'm doing that shit. I'm talking with the homie T.O., the homie Touch. We tell you like, yeah, nigga, let's play 21. We get on the court. And this is a clear as day, man. I, guess I, never, I never forget this shit because I've been booked twice before. I got booked at like 11 years old for a jam sport by them Rutland niggas in East New York. You feel me? I said, I'll never be a victim again. I hated that feeling. You feel me? Niggas booked me with the ski mask. When niggas came out with the uh, the ski mask with the nose, you could breathe out the nose. Mm-hmm. They got me crazy for that shit, nigga. I, I hated that feeling. What, they booked niggas me just wild. snatched it off you? Nah, the niggas, I'm walking by the bus stop on East New York by uh, Rutland Plaza, uh, 391, the school. And I'm walking, and I see a crowd of niggas. It's blizzard time. And the, the uh, niggas have the, the face on joint on. So I walk by. Hey, I'm always alert still. I'm mind you, I'm still, like I said, I'm young. I'm like 11. I hear this shit. I hear this shit. You know what I mean? And my shit looking probably like, it, it, look, it look real. It look good to them. I got all the strings on. I don't really, I've been booking niggas for strings all year. So my shit heavy on the strings. You know, back then, the strings is weight. And you got the different color strings, the nice patterns. You, you was all right. You was taking them shit. like, oh, he got it. I hear the whispers. So I'm like, all right. So I'm walking, woo, I hear, yo, yo, 
nigga, I'm still 11. These niggas had to be about 50. I think they went to Wingate. You feel me? Bitch ass niggas. I, I can never tell. I mean, you niggas probably hearing it right there. I mean, y'all got that shit, you know what I mean? Because I had to throw my books out. That was some whole shit. So the niggas say, yo, yo. I'm like, yo, what's up? I stop. The niggas walk up on me. One nigga walk up on me, and he, he do the knife joint. Like like a movie shit, bro. Like, you know niggas flick the knife out? Like, yo, let me get the uh, chance for it. You know what I mean? I kind of, I, I, I ain't resist much. I'm not going to lie, man. I, ain't, I kind of get like the, what? I'm like, these things got no mask on. I don't know about stabbing, man. That nigga's going to kill me. So I did it mad slow. You feel me? I did the slow joint, and then they, then they did the whole, like, all right, get up out of here type shit. You know what I mean? I went to school pissed off. You know, but I think I had a fight that day, man. I, I just remember that jazz sport, man. That jazz sport was brand new? Nigga, nigga, my mother's Haitian. She's not spending, by the time jazz sports was like $30, $35. Yeah, niggas is not like I work for that. The same way I got bullshit out my Avery, she gave me the South Pole. Any fresh shit I had to work for, I had to put in like be cool and good and like yo throw the hints. Like my mom's, my mom is, my mom is an immigrant. She learning the language at the time. So you gotta think coming from Haiti, they're not like niggas. You know I mean you know every old person said I had to wear the same clothes and I had one outfit for school. So coming from that and then you raising a kid and he's saying. I want uh, uh I remember when the 11s came out, they were eighty dollars. They were seventy nine ninety nine. The first 11, the black and red, the, the bread. Niggas know that. They get to my mother. That sounded like I just told her a thousand dollars for shoes. So it, I mean, I had to I had to pick and choose. I mean, when I got older, I was able to finesse. But I, the Gary Payne's was where I was doing that. The Grand Hills. I couldn't go too much, but uh, sixty five ninety nine. Maybe I might push a sixty nine ninety nine on a ah uh, on a. You know what I mean? Yeah. So a jazz sport already after they got five dollar book bags, nigga, that's the hierarchy. I'm shit, I'm eating high off the hog with a jazz sport. So I'm feeling good. So I'm loving that shit. They booked me for the shit, man. I just kept remember I walk home. What I, color I, was I, that shit if you remember? Not even to be petty, but you know what I mean? <laughs> I just need to know what color attracted the wolves. <laughs> yeah, it was a navy blue joint. Mm, so the navy blue joint be crispy though. But you know the Navy, but you gotta remember the strings on it. The strings pop. So, I mean, I keep blaming it on the strings. I feel like the strings may be a target. I mean, they seen the strings, they said, oh, this nigga, all right. I mean, yeah, bro, that jazz sport, bro. I love that jazz sport to death, bro. I'm not gonna lie to you, man. Like, I work hard for that one mother. I mean, and the worst part was having to come home, and I didn't even tell my moms I got booked. I had to do some fake, like I left it. You feel me? Because now I'm walking to school. I'm gonna be on Crown and Utica next to Lincoln Terrace, so I gotta walk down the whole Lincoln Terrace Park. So I don't want my mom to be like, oh, he can't walk to school. Ah, 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 ah. You feel me? So I had to play the whole, like, nigga, walking to school was the thing. Niggas at the bus stop, you feel me? You kind of mingle a little bit. You kind of not feel like, you know what I mean? I never took a school bus to school. No matter, in any grade, I never took a school bus. And my school went from kindergarten to eighth grade. It was the borderline of basically Crown Heights, East New York, in the Ville, right there by Rockaway. So what, what so you I, had I to wanna... do though, what you had to do after that book bag got booked, what, what you had to use the five dollar joint? Hold on, hold on. Niggas buzzing my door downstairs, hold on. Yeah. So what you had to do though, like what you had to nigga, just get had, the five dollar joint? The handsy pansy, nigga, hands on America, nigga, hold hold these books. Nigga, my mom was not hear that. You know what I mean? It would have been if I told her I got booked, she maybe would have got me something, but when I told her that, she was like, nigga, that's on you. You go go, 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 go back tomorrow and see if you can find it. I'm going to go I'm gonna go look for it. So I'm hands on it. I'm holding books now. I'm, I'm point dexter. You know what I mean? <laughs> I did that for like, uh, uh, for like, like, like four days. She kind of picked the vibe. Then she gave me the boo-boo bag. You feel me? You know the, you know the $5 joint, the $2.99 joint. Shit look crazy. You feel me? That, that was even worse. So now I'm doing the, the, uh, 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 uh. The South Pole over the Boo Boo book bag. It was, it, 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 it wowed out on me. You feel me? I think maybe about two weeks later, though, I end up, uh, I mean, not proud of it, but fuck it. I end up booking a nigga for an East Pack. Remember the East Packs? Mm -hmm. I booked a nigga for an East Pack, so I was kind of back in the game low key after that. But I remember from that point on, I was just came saying, like, I'm not giving shit away. I'm going to do the swing and run. I, that's all I kept saying. If nigga ever try to book me with the knife, I'm doing the swing and run. You feel me? Like, how bad you want this shit? How bad you want whatever you're trying to take, you're going to chase me. You feel me? Then then later on, my concept became, nigga, you got a knife, nigga. I, 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 I don't fought niggas with knives. You feel me? I got I got hit, blasted, but I don't want that fight. I don't fought niggas with knives. I mean, most niggas with a, with a knife, if they try to really fight a nigga, if they see a nigga really going, it throws their whole, their whole shit off. Everybody ain't really, like, really stabbing shit, man. Like, I mean, a gun is a lot easier than a finger. A lot of
lot of niggas have flipped that, that, that trigger. A lot of niggas is not able to really take a ginsu and really, really direct it in a nigga. And after you hit him, go again. A nigga might do one on some fearful shit, but if a nigga to double back on the ginsu, a lot of niggas' heart ain't really built like that. Yeah, so a lot of times that knife, that knife work dope. Nigga think he poked him a little something and it be lights out. Like, you feel what I'm saying? Like, that, them shits is dangerous, man. Them motherfucking knives, man. That knife play. Nah, shit. I, I, I done had a knife fight, man. Uh, me and the homie Jimmy, we, we, we done had a knife fight with the niggas on 152 in Wales. Spanish niggas, whole niggas tried to jump us in the hood. So, yo, all right, we got it. I want to hear about that, but I don't want to interrupt you from the basketball game. You threw, the, you threw your joint in the, in the jean pocket. For the basketball yeah, yeah, good catch, good catch, lads. You know, nigga be thinking about shit. You, you throwing back 20 years ago, so I remember some shit. But yeah, so now I'm on the basketball court. The nigga, uh, we sitting there, boom, we like, we stick 21. And uh, again, like I said, I, I remember like a movie very clearly. The homie shot the ball, he had the first shot. When he shot it, I grabbed the rebound. When I grabbed the rebound, I grabbed the ball, and I turned around, and the boy had the uh, uh, big boy, it looked like a nine. It was that close to me. It was close to me, and then he had two other niggas back down in the park. So it was three ratchets, and it was me and the homie. And uh, me and the homie, and all the homie that came with the weed, he came back with the weed. You said this so in got, this in McKinley? Of, yeah, McKinley Park, right there, right there. It, it's niggas that remember it, because I know somebody looked out their window and seen us laid down on the floor. He laid us down on the floor. So when the nigga got the nine next to my head, I freeze. So my first instinct is to look around the park. I look at the entrance, and like I said, that's the entrance like the, uh, Right across from Jane Adams, it's the entrance that goes straight down into the project. I look at it, and a nigga say clear as day. He said, you ain't gonna make it, I'm gonna burn you. You feel me? I don't know if he said burn, blast, boom. He just said, you are not gonna make it, and something, something. I don't know if he said shoot, fire, whatever he said. Like, nigga, I'm, I got you if you do. And I remember looking at the gate, and I said, ah. So, boom. Niggas laid niggas down. They're like, ah, yo, 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 uh, what the work at? Ooh. So I could tell it was the niggas from the area. You feel me? Where to work at? Woo. I'm like, man, I don't hustle, man. I just finished from coming from my bitch house. Boom, where to work at? And I heard other niggas say, where the chain at? So remember, I walked right by them. So, 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 so they was already sizing me up when I should have went home. They already sized me up when I walked by the front of the park. So, boom. He like, where the chain? I'm like, yo. And I fought hard. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Like, I, I worked hard for my shit. I didn't want to give it in. I ain't say I had it. I was like, yo, I ain't got it. They said, where the chain at? So now, I knew these niggas was, didn't give a fuck. They was cutthroat. You feel me? These niggas was going in niggas' pants. And you know where niggas' stash they work at. You feel me? They was going in niggas' pants. Like, where to work at? Woo, 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 woo. They going in. They grabbed the other homie shit. I don't sell fucking krills. Why I'm out there with niggas selling krills? That was at, at late night. Coming from some good, 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 good Garfield, man. I was all right. You feel me? I should have went home and relaxed. But I didn't. So I went over there. The niggas laid nigga down. So he... Go back to the homie, they taking niggas shit out of niggas' pockets, taking shit out of niggas' pockets. And nigga come back to me again, he like, nah, he like, yo, hey, he was the one, he was the one. Nigga with the tips. So he stand over me, he like, yo, where the chain at? I'm like, yo, bro, I ain't got it. I gave it to the other homie that there. He's like, what? The nigga pistol with me in the back of the head. <laughs> this is where the shit get wild. When the nigga do that, right? <laughs> I do the fake, uh, uh, like knockout shit. You know the movie shit, nigga hit a nigga. So I lay down flat and I lay down and I don't move. Like, 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 <laughs> the nigga go, I swear to God, bro, I swear on my life, T.O. was dead. A nigga go, bitch ass nigga, you ain't knocked out, I shoot you in the back of your head. I go, all right, all right, chill, chill. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I was like, how you want the nigga to do me? I'm like, all right, chill, chill. I, I ain't got it, bro. I told you, I don't hustle out here. I ain't got that. I gave it to my homie. That wasn't even my chain. So, pat in my pocket, they didn't touch the, 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 the little side pocket. He went over it, but they, I'm on the floor laying down, so the side pocket's kind of linked. So he's not really seeing it. So he patting my shit. I'm, I'm like, man, I'm laying on the floor. Like, ooh, ooh. So they start walking like they like they already booked this shit. They start walking and leaving. The other nigga go, nah, nah, fuck that shit. He doubled back. <laughs> he, he pulled my boots. He pulled his hands off my feet. I'm like, man. He like, shut up. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he like, I'm damn. I'm like, God damn. Pull his shit off. The first one he got off easy. I mean, that's my right foot. That shit always lose the left one. He had to do the untying shit. That shit was that. That was dehumanizing, man. That shit was hurtful. But I just kept thinking. 
Yeah, bro, it was hurtful, man. Nigga, uh, you know your mom take your shoes off and you get back in like, oh, you put the you put the left foot in the right foot, she mad, she taking it off like you stupid ass. You know, you know what I mean? That's how I felt. Like, give me that. So he pulled the shit off. So, bro, I remember that shit, man. I'm laying down flat. I'm like, yeah, niggas better not move. So I said, we stayed down there for a minute. I ain't gonna lie, we stayed. I, I didn't know these things gonna turn around and shoot. We look up. This is this is breaking the night, so it had to be about. Three in the morning. I mean, that'd be a real, real late night because the morning didn't come too much after. So I know for a fact enough niggas seen it because if you know that park in McKinley, nigga, it's an open park. So the whole project is right there. Everybody from every floor, they got the buildings across the street, the houses across the street, everybody from every floor. You see niggas laid down in the middle of a big ass park. You feel me with the with the, uh, the nighttime beams on. So boom, I got up. Boom. My homie's like, Yo, you good? You good? I'm like, yeah, yeah. Niggas took some chum chum. Boom, I got my chain though. Boom, I go in the building. We go find the other uh, quote unquote big homies. Them niggas like, yo, I, I, they like, yo, this is your shoes, man. Right? Niggas gave me some uh, big ass Nike uh, uh, size 15. I'm wearing a size nine and a half. It was just flopping around. They like, yo, we gonna look for them. In my head, I'm thinking these niggas is not sitting around here with these boots on. Y'all really got me doing a double walk machine with these big ass slippers on. Like, yo, they booked the homie. We got that, so I'm the victim. But the only thing that gave me some kind of pride was. I still have my chain on. You feel me? Even though I had them big ass boo boo on the feet, flipping and flapping, I was like, I still got my chain on. I'm like, yeah, they caught me. Ah, ah. You know what I mean? So niggas got, we out here running around with rats and shit. Did that shit for about 20 minutes. Later on, I come to find out, uh, the niggas from Soundview, you feel me? Uh, I, you know what I mean? God bless them people. I don't know what happened to that. That's not my business. But, you know what I mean? But yeah, I come to find out that's what happened. It, it, it was just a the circumstance. They was coming to book them niggas anyway. I just happened to be, you know what I mean, the, 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 the icing on the cake. You know what I mean? They took the, uh, uh, the mac and cheese joints, man. That mecca house was fire, man. I know you got your preferences with the jean shorts. That, that, I was fresh that day, man. I was fresh, man. Now, the yeah, mac got... and cheese joints was the regular Gore-Tex mac and cheese joints or the three-quarter joints that's mad hot? <clears throat> nah, it wasn't hot. It was regular. They looked like the regular beef and rocks. I guess them shits was mid, like. Oh, they just like the beef and rocks, but the yellow yeah. ones, right? Yeah. But yeah. I but I told you I had to trim a, a custom a, a painted white. You feel <laughs> <saw> me? Nigga <laughs> laughing. <laughs> so so them shits pop. We just really pop. They they stood out. So I guess when them niggas was leaving, they were just looking like, like we ain't get shit from this dumb little nigga right here. And I mean, then I did the fake uh, the fake knockout stunt. So I guess it was just more like, yo, we just gonna take these, just take. Them. So whoever's out there, nigga, I hope you shit ain't fit your bitch ass feet, nigga. You got those that day, nigga. Whoever, whoever's wearing them shits, they know them shits are stolen. Them shits was custom, ain't nobody had them shits. You know what I mean? But yeah, that's how I got booked over there in McKinley and shit, man, in the forest and shit. You know what I mean? But uh, yeah, and I ain't fucked with that hood like that. I still was out there, but I already knew, like, I knew coming into it, that's why I hustled in Jackson, that they was cutthroat. Them niggas was robbing niggas they knew for 20 years. So me as an outsider, I'm not sitting there giving these niggas four course meals off my little shit, nigga. I'm grinding up buying with Zams and Pele's. I'm flossing in Jackson. Jackson showed me love. You feel me? Any movie I had to make out there, I was embraced. Over here, them niggas was out here, and then I lived there. So I always felt like, because of the fact that there was a project into the building, I didn't want smoke because a nigga just sit up in the building and wait. I'm in a fucking program. You feel me? Anybody know on the second floor, they knew that was a group home. Nobody said anything too much. But they knew that was a group home and the crack house was next door, nigga. So they knew already, if you see me coming out of there, they knew exactly who we was. So I just didn't want that tension to the fact where niggas be like, yo, we line them up. All you gotta do is sit in the building and wait. You gotta buzz the door to get in. So, I mean, so I ain't never ever, ever, ever interact with any money shit out there. Any type of money play, any type of fresh shit out there. I went to Jackson, even when I started pipping a bit, uh, and I came back home, I had the 550, I had the Range Rover. I went through Jackson. I ain't riding through Corson McKinley. I mean, just. I mean, niggas will take the hubcaps while you driving out there. I ain't want no fuss of that. You know what I mean? But yeah, that's how these niggas booked me over there, though, man. But shout out to the Bronx, man. You know what I mean? 241st, White Plains, all that. Them niggas showed me love up there, man. I, I, I'm always going to be in depth to the, the culture of uptown as far as the Harlem and the Bronx. You know what I mean? I'm gonna always remember, I'm a Brooklyn baby. I'm 718. But I'm always going to respect, you know what I mean? Love the 212 and, uh, you know what I mean? The uptown shit, though. But yeah, that's how I got booked, though, man. Fucking around. It was an older nigga. I used to be selling crack. I was selling crack and um, the nigga, and I was in 30, I was in 30 in Howard. I was in 30 Greenwood. So um, 
I'm selling crack. I used to sell a crack. So nigga come, I got the I got the bag. I get a nigga to crack in the hallway, boom. Nigga take his shit off the block. So this nigga come in there. Tall nigga. You just taking random walk-ups? I'm in the building. Niggas know this is this jumping over here. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So this older nigga pull up. I mean, this tall nigga. Older nigga, old head nigga. He like, yo. Let me get two 20s. I think he said a 50, whatever he said. I'm like, word. So say if a nigga asked for a 20. I might throw three 20s in your hand. Pick the one you want. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? That's mm -hmm. how I used to. So a nigga don't be like, yo, let me see another yo here. Mm -hmm. So I think I put three. Son, a nigga took the three. Went in his, in his zip this? shit, went in his shit, pulled out the joint. He said, yo, don't make this a homicide. You feel me? Now let me tell you something about me, bro. I don't respect no niggas robbery, none. I'm telling you, bro, you dead probably gotta shoot me, bro. I don't respect no robbery, bro. I looked in this nigga Osby, and this is on everything, bro. I don't respect no robbery, nigga. Me and that nigga, would've, he would have to shoot me. I looked in this nigga Osby, I swear to you, bro. You just seen death. I, I, I saw that this nigga wasn't this playing. Didn't fuck, yeah. I grabbed the whole bag, gave the nigga the whole bag. Here! Yeah, the fuck on my face. I'm like, yo, here! The nigga spit. When he spit around the corner, I run outside, yo! My niggas come running, yo, son. If we go around the corner, that nigga was born. Nigga was an old school stick up kid, bro. I, it's crazy because I later, later I was I was with one of my I was with one of my older my older heads. I was always with the older heads. I'm with my older head one day. We in Brownville projects. This where the nigga stomped at. He had a crib and all that. My older head take me yo coming to my man crib in Brownville. This is on guard, bro. On everything I love. We go to the crib. I go with him. We go on the crib. There's people in the crib. Son, I see the nigga, son. Son, I'm tight. I see this nigga in the crib. He like it. The nigga saw me. Now he saw me. What you working on? Nigga, stick up, kid. You got, got good memory. <laughs> I'm like, yo, Wink, that's the nigga that put the joint out. What? Wink, like, what? He said, yo, I ain't gonna say son name, but niggas in Brownsville know this stick up nigga. Son said, yo, you talk to him and all that. Yo, he told me, yo, I ain't know. Woo, 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 woo. So, me and that nigga got cool. That nigga used to come through like, yo, he used to come through through Howard. Like, yo, what up? Where they at? I'm like, yo. Point it out. Tell you the they point. over there on the soft side. The Cause we over there on the hard side selling drugs. Go get them niggas on the soft. I'm like, yo, they on the soft side. Niggas over there in front of the woo woo. Nigga go over there, Dude. pull it off, come back, yo, here. Man, niggas just got cool like that. Word. That's crazy. That's a fact. You feel me? So I remember I said that to him. When I said that to the boy, he go, uh, he say some shit. He 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 ain't call me the SL. Disrespect the term for blood. He ain't body like that. But he just like, oh, alright, we gotta get it in. I'm like, alright, cool. I'm, I'm excited now. Now I'm about to make a movie. So now we go upstairs. Phone go up the stairs. Go in somebody uh somebody room. We get down. We get down. Shice had a a, a a big cousin. You feel me? I ain't gonna put his name out there, but he was all uh, he was blood. So we started rocking with the blood wave. You feel me? And even to the point where I remember, you know, uh, Tax Stone, right? Yeah, I don't know the bro, but yeah. yeah but you know, up uh, Tax Stone, he went to Kanashi, uh, uh, uh with me. You feel me? I got kicked out after the first year because the truth is, I went to Spofford, but I don't know nothing too much about Tax Stone. He used to go by the name Tax Dollar. If I'm not mistaken, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But if I'm not mistaken, he used to go by the name Tax Dollar from Star Right. And they used to be beefing with the BMW niggas. You feel me? And also, you know, it was a lot of shit going by Kanasi. I see you, baby, but yeah, they used to beef with the B uh, BMW niggas. And I remember this clear as day. I'll never forget this shit. You know when you first start school and uh, um, you got orientation, you go to the auditorium, get your classes, find out where you're going and everything? I don't know how they do it for you, but you, you understand the concept, right? With all the kids going to the auditorium and you're trying to find out where you're going to give you a paper. No doubt. The nigga tax dollar walked up in the auditorium, in a big auditorium, in a high school auditorium, walked on the stage, and nigga said, 
I'm taxed, blah, blah, blah. I'm blood, blah, 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 blah. Anybody want to see me? Ah, ah, ah. Nigga, I was shocked. I'm not going to lie to you. I was shocked, nigga. For, and he was a freshman. He got to be the same age bracket as me. Either that or he was a transfer. He might be one year old or he got left back. It's, it's, it's got to be one of those because I was a freshman in there. And he was he was coming in there too. And I think he was, I'd never seen him in the school. So I don't know. And the boy came out in front of that auditorium and said who he was and started banging blood. As crippled as Kanasi was at the time, it was it was intriguing. So now I'm leading up to the point where, where I got my first the first time I get cut. So now the blood wave is going on. Again, we putting the name in the hood. We starting to spread out. You feel me? The Flatlands are starting to fuck with us. Uh, 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 niggas from Brookline is fucking with us. The '90s. You feel me? You know, every everybody's kind of really giving more respect to to to, to the '90s now. You feel me? The Crip niggas are kind of they kind of quiet. You feel me? The OG Crip at the time was a boy named Fish. I, I don't know if he was from Brookline or the Hundreds, but he was a nigga, and he was he was quiet. It wasn't really. I mean, I'm not taking nothing away from the niggas, but. You feel me? It was quiet. Crips was way more prevalent so blessed at the time. You feel me? Back then, the only Crips hoods they had was Sally Gangsters. You feel me? That's an older hood, rolling 60s, and the GSC. You feel me? And yeah, that was it. Other shit started making noise later. So at that time, now I'm, I'm over here doing no street bullshit. I get sent to Spofford. When I get to spill Spofford, I remember, uh, ACS got involved because they like he ran away from home. He he's cutting class, and uh, my mom didn't know any better, bro. She's an immigrant from Haiti, bro. She worked her ass off. She bust her ass to get a college degree. I, I, I didn't realize her struggle till I got older. You feel me? I was just kind of wanted to be a delinquent. So when she going to court for me, I remember uh the little lawyer that represented talking to her, and I'm like, yo, now I know. Now it's just like a public defender. They not. You feel me? And they telling her like, yo, you can't handle him, we can help him. You feel me? They giving her the rule right? like, yo, if you can sign up here and tell the judge this, we can help him make it better. So I remember the court said all this shit and they told her that and then they said, uh, she's like, yo, I don't know if y'all can help me, I don't know what to do. Y'all can do something with him, I don't know what to do. So now I go to the uh, group phone process. And I go there, the first shit I, I go to is uh, Atlantic. I was down the block from Gowanus in uh, Wyckoff. You know what good Kiwanis and White Golf is. Yes. So that's at that time. So now I'm leaving. Canarsie is mostly houses. Brooklyn is the only project, really. They got, uh, matter of fact, no, they got, uh, by Seaview and all that. But around my immediate area, Brooklyn was really the only project. And they had to go, we had to go through a park to get to their side. So now I'm over here seeing, uh, Kiwanis and White Golf. And, uh, that's when, uh, you feel me, uh, Twin had, Twin had over there. I mean, that's when niggas eating. I don't know what happened. Shit happened over there, but that, that's what was really the block over there. And the funny thing about uh, Atlantic around that time at 13 when I was over there at uh, by the project, because that was the first time where I realized, like, I don't know if this shit gonna sound weird, where where I realized, like, like females, like, bitches could be whores. Like, I don't know how this, like, when I realized, like, uh, you could rock with a bitch and a bitch would be a whole hoe and you don't know. No, 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 when I say it like that, it means explain the situation so you can kind of catch what I'm saying. I mean the joint all the way over there by Atlantic. You feel me? Nobody know the joint. It's rocking with the joint, rocking the joint. I bring the joint back to my hood to the floss. When I get to the floss, some older niggas like, yo, oh, we know Shorty. Shorty woo woo. We all had Shorty a party woo. That's what I meant. Like that as, as a 13 year old, that was the first time where I could see oh, that. Yeah, hell yeah. Up. 13 years old, you don't have a clue. Yo, know, they that's what I'm saying. That's why I said that. I mean that was the first time I seen that. I was like, yo, what? They're like, oh yeah, Shorty got the uh the joint, the uh, the, the tattoo behind the ear, right? Oh, no. I was in there cupcaking. You know what I mean? I'm over here walk close with the joint. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the older nigga, it was red. It was so random, too, bro. When I say so random, it was so random. He like, I was like, oh, that shit smashed my head up, too. So now I'm in Atlantic. I mean, when I went to Atlantic, it's a, uh, like I said, the building is like up the block from the projects. It looked like a residential building. It don't look like it look. I don't know how to explain the building. Don't look. It where look like I, where is it at? Atlantic and what? Atlantic Ave. I can't remember the cross street, bro. Whatever it, street. In East was, New York. Not Atlantic, close to Fulton, close to downtown. I can see the um. Oh, yeah, yeah. I can see Brooklyn House from where I'm at, from Atlantic. Yeah. I first go inside the Atlantic building. Like I said, it's a, it looks like it blends in, but the, the building now that I know, it looks like a building in the yard. Like you gotta get buzzed in, man. At the time, not exposed to that. You feel me? Sparford was the only little stint. Then I did some shit at uh, Light Street next to um, Bellevue. There's a little program shit over there where they hold you in before they transfer you out. 
anybody that know that this system, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So now when I get inside the building, so it's throwing me off because, yeah, you know I mean, again, like I said, it, it, these buildings and these all institutions they breed you for the for the legal system. They breed you for incarceration because again, at the time I didn't know, but now it looks like any yard camp. Uh, uh, level one yard, level two yard, and level one yard really. It looks all like that. You walk in, bunch of niggas around, got the TV, go upstairs, everybody got individual rooms. So I get in there, and I think I might have told you that part where I came in there, there was a nigga from uh, Yonkers uh, named Casanova. You feel me? Light skin nigga, though, not this thing. A light skin nigga named, named Casanova. When we walked in the room with like four other niggas, and he like, yo, we got the little shit. He like, where you from? Like, we're on blood, non trade. He like, yo, we got a shit in here, our little clique, we got a shit called D-Block. I remember this shit, it's funny as hell. Like, three, four niggas came in the room. And uh, he like, yo, niggas ain't done with D-Block, they against us. So what you trying to do? I hooked off. I, like I said, man, swing first, win first, man. That, that's, that's how we go with that. So I get down with the shit, so I'm rocking with the niggas, it's D-Block, blood. So now this is, again, leading to the first time I get cut. We in there now, it's blood, it's Latin Kings. It's all that, it's, 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 it's juvenile shit, bro. So you gotta remember, it's a bunch of young niggas from all over New York. You feel me? That's delinquents, gangs, whatever they're doing, they, they ain't going on the right path. So we put up all of us in the building. And I remember we was in the, uh, the little day room area. They go, I'm watching some random shit, I can't even tell you. I remember what song was out at the time. That Maxwell song, that, oh, 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 you know the shit I'm talking about. I should tell you, man, that's just that one. Remember that one? <laughs> you know that shit. I don't know yeah, what I'm, that. I, I remember yeah. Maxwell songs, but I don't. This nigga is dirty. That shit you right there. I don't know what that was right there. <laughs> Yo, bro, the shit, the shit. You should have tell you, but I just can't let it show. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. This, this funny ass nigga. Nigga, I'm not a singer, nigga. If I was, I wouldn't. I'd have a YouTube page singing. But yeah. So I, was, I think the video was on the Glenn King switch the shit. Boom, when he changed the shit. I'm like, yo, nobody said anything. I'm kind of looking. I'm like, yeah, y'all let this little kid motherfucker change the channel? That was our uh, disrespect for them. You feel me? LK, I mean, again, I ain't trying to disrespect no Latin kids listening, but y'all know the temperature. We, we was not, you know what I mean? It was never, now it's kind of cordial, but at a point, it was it was red against yellow. So when I say that, it's like one of the, one or two of the Latin kings in there, but I got the bloods, you got the, you got. Oh, you said it was ABG niggas in there too? These ABG niggas in there, yeah. That's when I first started hearing that. But at that time, I we saw ABG niggas as niggas that because they always ran with bloods. ABG niggas never ran with cribs. We always felt like they was just niggas that never wanted to be down with bloods, but they was rock with the same thing with rough riders. All them niggas like nah, I'm gonna keep it they, real with you. You know, I don't know about what them niggas, them young niggas was doing, but ABG started on some on some neutral shit. And then it evolved into whatever it evolved into, but it was strictly a Brownsville thing. It was from the Ville? Hell yeah, nothing but the Ville. Yeah, I can see that. Because a lot of niggas, a lot of niggas from uh, that ABG shit, it was from that side, your neck of the woods. Yeah, but they yeah. definitely was rocking with Bloods heavily. Yeah, yeah, that's what they, yeah, nah, they, they, that's all it was. And again, like I said, I'm about to say like they wasn't, they wasn't anything about that, but we just looked at it was like cousins of Bloods. Say we back in the days, GDs, there was a few GDs, we used to call them Crip Cousins. They was, they was favorites with the Crips, now they beef with Crips, but back then we used to consider GDs Crips. They get, I mean, they get treated the same way as we treat Crip. You mean like, that's your people, they riding the six, we ride the five. You feel me? So, I remember I said the last, I said call the nigga Lil' Kim, and like everything kind of froze. You feel me? At that time, I was kind of ruthless a little bit. Now, when I say ruthless, I was just like, I wasn't, we didn't really stop playing with hammers yet. You feel me? So, so my whole shit was just that, like, you feel me? The worst thing I could do is, is lose a fight. You feel me? And I could count on, on both hands the fights I lost, and I know I can't count on my whole body the fights I've had. So I know my ratio is definitely on a good percentage. You feel me? So I remember I said that to him. When I said that to the boy, he go, uh, he say some shit. He 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 ain't call me the SL shit, the, the disrespectful term for blood. He ain't violate like that. But he just like, oh, alright, we gotta get it in. I'm like, all right, cool. I'm, I'm excited now. Now I'm about to make a movie. So now we go upstairs, form, go up the stairs. I think it was like, I don't know how many floors it was, but somebody been in the landing. They don't know. We go upstairs, we get in one of somebody, uh, somebody's room. We get down. We get down. I felt like I washed them up. 
he hit me with some kind of like after I was watching, you know when you you, you punch you, know, you punishing somebody real quick, they do that bear hug joint like on some like the slow like on boxers do. You try to slow the tempo down. So when he do that, I'm like, yo, bro, you ain't about nothing. Boom, I pushed him off and jabbed him. When I got him off me, the homie said, yo, you bleeding. I'm like, what you talking about? I'm like, yo, you bleeding. When I, he say that, I look down at boy hand, he got the sharp, sharp toothbrush. Super sharp. I don't even know how he even got it at that point. He keep real juice. She look like a straight arrowhead. Like some real African shit. She was like pointy. So boom, when I see the joint in his hand, I like, I black out and all of a sudden I feel my back. Cause I don't know how, before I didn't feel it, I don't know, but now all of a sudden my back felt hot. So, I'm like, yo, homie just blasted me. I'm like, homie just blasted you. I lifted up my white shirt. The homie's like, oh shit, this shit open. So I felt like, I think he stabbed the joint and dug it in. Cause I could see, the, I still got the scar on my back. It's a slash that goes straight down. So that's how good it was. And fucking 20 years later, I could still see the mark. People like, it means somebody see my back. They can see it. So when I see the joint, everybody stop and break the joint. He take the shit from the boy. I'm like, yo, he dead. I'm like, he can't live here. He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. So now I'm running around trying to find some type of poker, any kind of job. At that time, motherfuckers was just staying armed. And you said this was in a group home? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a group home. Basically, it was a group home reception center. You feel me? You can stay there for a minute, and then, then they ship you to a real home. But you, you could be in there for a minute, depending on who you are. Me and and how old is the kids there? That shit go from uh, let's say uh, 13 to 20. I think yeah, 13 to 20 or 13 to 19. Yeah. I want to say 20 maybe. Yeah, 13 between that. So we all in there. So when you do that joint, like I said, I'm still fresh. I'm still gotta be still fresh. 13. I I, I see red. I'm hot. I'm hot. I'm hot. I'm going to get a poker shit. Everybody grab me. They're like, boom. I'm like, yo, let's get down and get the boy. Say he don't want to fight no more. He like, he good. I'm like, yo, all right, you got to pop your beads. You feel me? At that time, you feel me? That was the wave when beads was big. You feel me? Like, yo, if you pop a crypt, crypt of beads and come back with it, that was a, a badge of honor. It was like basically in the military when you see all the patches of Purple Heart, if you was able to pop some white beads, whoop them out and have the beads or take these flag, that was basically like you was just getting, getting trinkets all over your uniform. So when I told him that, the boy was like, he hesitated a little bit. I think the other Land King was like, that's how I knew the niggas did he ain't to smoke. He told him to do it, he popped the bees, boom. I remember for like three days straight, because I, I I couldn't tell him people nothing. I slept on my stomach because my back was right there. So now he, he cut, he sliced you open or he stabbed you? He stabbed and pulled down. Mm. When he was bear hugging me, that's what he was doing. Remember I said he bear hugged me. Mm. That's what he was doing. So I never seen it. I never seen him come out because I was like, I was punishing him. So he was that in the pocket. And then when he bear hugged, when, he, when I got close on him, he hit it. So like I said, I got a, a cool little slash straight down my back. But it was deep enough that it, it, it hurt it. So the boy, uh, when he do that, I popped the bees. I, I, and these niggas just fucking with me. I slept on my stomach. I had one of my uh, homies. Yeah, I had him switch bunks with somebody else. He stayed in the room with me. You feel me? Boom, my, that shit was. She was, uh, I mean, it was, it, I felt degraded, but I felt like I had the W, but I, I didn't feel satisfied. You feel me? Like, like I said, I held it down, I whooped him out, but I felt like now I got a permanent, you feel me? Oh boy, oh boy left a permanent stain on me. Like, like he, he got me with that. So now, five after three days, I slept on my stomach going when they do the count, they do the count and everything. That's why I said all this shit kind of, the way the system is, I don't know if it's ever gonna change, because I doubt it will. The, the, the kids of the youth, the young, black, Spanish, even white, whatever, when they go through any kind of systematic things about about just adjusting to society as the youth and how they try to you know, can reform you, as they say, it, all it does is prepare you for the structure of, of prison, of state time, federal. All it does is prepare you for that, where you're told what to do, how to do it. You're, you're, you're synchronized when you eat. You feel me? All it does is, is, is yeah, kind that of- That shit is a pathway. Every, everybody who was in group homes, Ended up in Sparfit. Everybody was in Sparfit. Yeah. Ended up in DFY. Then it was C seventy four Rikers Island. Then it's up top. You know, it, then it's the you, feds. If you keep you going, the, you call the perfect. It's literally it's it's, it's elevator. It's an elevator that goes. It, this is your floor. You get on this floor now. It only goes up though. So now you get selected few that was never supposed to be in that situation. You get the, yeah. You get, get a few that make it out that make it out that cycle, but. Yeah. The average motherfucker. Oh, the average? Oh, yeah, that's your route. 
you in you in a group home you a young black boy in a group home at 11 12 you're gonna be on rikers island by by well now it's by 18. you'll be in the system by though by 14 15. easy you know what i think it is though i think it's the fact that you lose the fear of it you see what I'm saying? Like, you, you don't, you don't, you know what I mean? Most kids that get in trouble and get right, they get scared of, of going, going to jail, getting scared of getting this, scared of getting locked up. You feel me? I did my bid in NY, when I went to do my, my bid in, in, uh, in uh, Vegas, I mean, even in, in uh, Jersey, niggas thought I was, I was the type of nigga that been down for forever because I knew how to bid her in. I, mean, I was already uh, groomed into the bidding process from, 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 from the youth. Hey, yo, the link is in the description in the comments. Join my Patreon to hear me getting at this Brooklyn hater 10 whole clowns. The bigger a nigga get up in this motherfucker, the more they hate you. The bigger a nigga get up in this motherfucker, the more they hate you. Lads. The bigger a nigga get up in this motherfucker, the more they hate you. Brownsville, Brooklyn. The bigger a nigga get up in this motherfucker, the more Beast they hate one, two, you. Beast 129. Yeah, most slept on rap, nigga hopping out the back, nigga. Jack filled with the names of the coke kings. I was raised in the Ville, son, I know things. So things most dudes can't stomach. Four fifth brains ooze like hummus. Get fried shit tied to the rap game. Big six with the five in the back. Plain white ups, cause the feet work easy. Can't walk, cause the street's so greasy. My kneesy caught ten for a Mac 10. Nigga woulda got ten months back when. Smack den, stay foul, they love you. Change up for a while, they fuck you. Get big, they six, get antsy. Niggas want you to stay shrimp scampy. Fucking haters. The bigger a nigga get up in this motherfucker, the more they hate you. The bigger a nigga get up in this motherfucker, the more they hate you. The bigger a nigga get up in this motherfucker, the more they hate you. The bigger a nigga get up in this motherfucker, the more they hate you. Hot as feel, they hate on turbo. Is they new to my shit, home on a furlough? Earn low, eight racks on Louie And I'm hood, no tax, I'm Huey In the hood with a bitch, I'm Goldie Please don't throw the block like Goldies My parolees will see you Bang that American Eagle, act like seafood These crabs be cash repellers Not Nas, but nasty fellas I am get lost like tapes In the crib, pigs caught my safe I ain't snitch, I'm a G to the end. Made the screens 3D in the bins. Got the barbershop chair in the loft. So they can't Anastasia me off. Damn haters. The bigger a nigga get up in this motherfucker, the more they hate you. The bigger a nigga get up in this motherfucker, the more they hate you. The bigger a nigga get up in this motherfucker, the more they hate you. The bigger a nigga get up in this motherfucker, the more they hate you.